Okay. Uh, all right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi. Um, this is very rare that I have to film a disclaimer before you watch an episode, only because I feel like this discussion could potentially be um, controversial, which I hope won't be. But um, because there are things that we touched upon, especially like uh, religion, but I want to make sure that you watch this with an open-mindedness and I do want to po apologize in advance if I am not able to eloquently express my thoughts in this episode which may be conceived as something different but do trust that my intention and the guest of this episode's intention is to basically share our experiences of um, what we went through and especially what she went through and know that this is not a smear campaign against any organization or any persons who we referenced or mentioned. Throughout this interview, you'll hear me reminding you all as well that this is a discussion, a suggestion for improvement, not to spread any hate. And if you feel differently about what was discussed, please restrain from sending hateful messages. Instead, maybe suggest something constructive or put it in a way where we're able to understand where you're coming from as opposed to attacking the person or myself personally. I think that's all I have to say. I am pretty nervous about the release of this episode and I am ready for whatever may or may not happen. So I do appreciate that you are here with us um, to watch this episode and I think that's all I have. So I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope you will find something meaningful. And yeah, that's all I have today. Enjoy. We'll try to make it as conversational as possible. Tapi the interviewing does come in when I want to address a few things. Lah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what are you going to address? Uh, there's a few things that have been shared to me mm -hmm. by our listeners. Because recently, I finally made a Google form where people can officially submit guest suggestions. Which was a very good move though. I know. Which because this time, oh my like God, all I the, swear. All the, venue, all the suggestions were like in comments, in DMs. Yes. Uh, so I'm sure that was yes. like, Because out do of I my DM, first? like... Tinggal lah sudah. Oh no. That's why like at some point, I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure I spoke to Awesome Mummy at some point. And I have to unearth it. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we actually had a full on. And I forgot to reply like, yeah. But this time, um, there is a proper like form where I can refer back to. And then I did receive a few suggestions again um, for you to come on the show. For me to invite you to come on oh the show. Gosh. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's nice because it's so clear that what people want me to ask you about and mm. also what they want us to talk about mm. but i do have my own questions um i do want to also get to know you um just to provide me a bit of context for me to understand where you're coming from and why you do the things you do lah okay. yeah so much um before we start i just want to remind this is recordings now yeah so i just want to remind everyone to subscribe to our youtube channel for everyone who's watching now because according to our statistics about over 70 percent of the watchers are not subscribed to the channel. So by you subscribing, it will help us reach sponsorships and gain more visibility. So thank you so much. 70%? About 70% of people. Guys, subscribe. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Come on, man. Support. I need to do more call that's what said. I need to do more CTAs, which is what call I just did. Action. Yeah. Subscribe now, guys. <laughs> but yeah, so um is Hanisa Saleh is your first and last name. Is that how you were addressed? Actually, I'm known as Ness. Ness. Yeah, Ness. So Ness. I got the name Ness when I was studying in Australia. So okay. Australians were having a hard time pronouncing my name, Hanisa. They call me Hamish. Hey. Hamish is an Australian name. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and Hamish is a popular Australian name. Okay. So they're like, Hamish? No, no. Hanisa. Hamish? And then... It's kind of like microaggression at some point. I was like, okay, just no mind. Just call me Ness. 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 Okay. So that's why it So, came Ness, also known as Awesome Mummy, welcome to Easy Does It. Thank you for having me, Easy. Yeah, finally. Finally. Okay, yes. guys, can stop stop submitting my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so as I was saying just now, um, after 
so before this, yes, people have submitted your names via DMs and also the, the Google Forms. Um, I was fully aware and people were very clear why they want me to have you on the show. And then we've also exchanged a few DMs, oh, me asking it. why, like, like, what is it that you do? Like, why do people want you to come on my show? And that's the beauty of this podcast because it, it, um, it exposes us to, like, people who we don't know yes. and when you think Brunei is already small actually which, um, there's still a lot of people out there's there who we don't know about and they have a lot of stories to yeah, tell a lot of and stories a lot of voices yeah, like yours exactly. yeah so one thing that obviously you asked me what I wanted to address right yeah. um, I think um, for sure what you shared with me I wanted to address about how you were contacted by Mora <laughs> can we talk about it I don't see why not. <laughs> I mean, is there... No, no, no. Uh, my husband is here to make sure that we, ah, don't okay. get, we don't get thrown out of the country. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I mean, as long as we put it in a way where we're not trying to bash anybody, mm. we're just trying to understand the situation mm. because that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Because I do want to understand your point mm. and I do want to understand Dorang punya point jua, why they find it necessary to call you and, like, put you in a room with six people mm. who interrogated you for three hours. Mm. Yeah. But we'll get to that. So as I wanted to, I know this podcast, I'd like to take our listeners on a journey. So much when you're watching a movie, there's a beginning, middle, climax, end, right? Mm. So you can start with giving us a context of who you are, just briefly, because I did do my research. I watched the Fasting Bro episode. That's sampai habis pulang. Tapi macam, um, just to understand jola like um, what you do about so just in case people have not seen it um, give us a brief background of who Ness or Osamami is and then we'll get to the serious stuff all right so my name is Hanisa Saleh I am a stay-at-home mother so for 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 15 years I've been a stay-at-home mother but I did graduate with um, human biology from Australia so mm. that is like my my major but after I got married, we both decided that I should just stay at home and take care of the kids. So I've been a stay-at-home mom since then. But along the way, I've also managed to become a um, parenting coach, which I haven't been practicing. But I do, you know, whenever my friends have issues with their children, they do come to me and I still give um, tips on how to coach them. And then I'm also a student um, from Ribat Academy. This academy is based in... Uh, USA, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, it is a academy run by female scholars. And these female scholars, they are um, well learned. They have learned from those who have learned way, 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 all the way, all the way back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's a academy to breed or to produce more female scholars. So it's a oh. female for female academy. And I'm currently a student there. Uh, I'm taking my certification to teach Islamic studies for teens, for teens wow. specifically. And I'm also currently taking the ijaza, which is to memorize the whole of Quran um, with a sanad. Sanad means the chain of narration or way of memorization goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I'm taking both of that. Wow. Yes. Did that decision to take certification for teaching come after whatever that happened to you? And uh, that was when we I was still living in Oman. Okay. Yeah, so when I was still living in Oman, we the one of the things that I love staying in Oman was that we had a circle of um a circle of families who constantly study about Islam. Mm. So they would uh we would have gatherings and they would have scholars coming in. They would invite scholars to uh, to Oman and then we would just learn and study from them. So from there, I was like, oh, okay, there's something more to this. Like, mm. you know, like, we can't just be... Orang check out, like, the jahannam tu cukup. Like, I get a lot of the, like, the jahannam ugama tu cukup. Okay. Like, you don't have to go further than that. It's enough. Mm. But there is something more towards wanting to deep, you know, learning more about your faith, wanting mm. to just be a better person, honestly. Yeah. Just to be a better person because... You just want to learn what, what is there, what is more, what can you do, what can you do more, what, how can you be better, that's all. Mm. So, yeah. so when you were in Oman and you were having all these gatherings and discussions with your peers, can, mm. about like, macam, how they 
uh, conduct Islamic teachings ke kiranya di sana tu or macam um, their viewpoints no uh, well sort of like a f- formal informal Islamic t- Islamic teaching yeah and that sort yeah. of like made you reflect on how um, the teachings are here in Brunei especially Ugama studies lah actually when we were in Oman we because uh, like for the expat community we were very concerned about how our children are going to learn Islam mm. because in Oman they have a different mazhab which is mazhab ibadi okay totally di- totally different um, from Shafi'i and other Ahli Sunnah so they're considered ibadis are only concentrated in Oman mm. and so we were like okay our children can't learn ibadi mazhab ibadi because you know eventually we'll go back and then Oh, we, pasal, oh yeah, yeah the, the, different masab. Yeah. So we like eventually we'll go back mm. to Brunei. So we have to make sure that whatever they learn at is consistent with the Asli Sunnah wal Jamaah. So the expert community, the Oman, consisting of mostly Malaysians, Indonesians, Pakistanis, um, agreed to form a school mm. for the children. Mm-hmm. So we have a kira sekolah gama, but only once a week, and it's only like. Two two hours, two hours per week. So they have a so it's the the the, the school is run by the, by the parents themselves, and that's who, and we have a we have a proper syllabus and the syllabus is checked by the Omani ministry again. Yeah, the Omani uh, religious ministry has checked the syllabus and mm-hmm. they agree with it and they and we got the permission to teach it. Mm-hmm. So from there, I could see. How vastly different it was for, for from the way that we teach Ugama in Brunei and the way that Ugama is taught in Oman. Mm. And from in Oman, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of a lot of hands on, a lot of um, a lot of love. I could say a lot of love for mm. the kids. They enjoy coming to to the Ugama. Uh, Ugama di sana. Punya classes yeah. oh. So it's it's something that. Until today, actually, they still they still miss it. Until today, like every day, we have gama every day, kan? Mm. And then they're like, oh, I wish I was back in Oman. Oh, I wish we can yeah. learn this back in Oman. Wait, how old are they? Are they still going to gama school? Yeah, they they're still in gama school. Oh, so they're still anulah kira macam berapa umur kan tu kalau dia jumpa? Because of the because we were the kami rajista here. Mm. Oh, but no, because we were in Oman, so we had to we were a bit delayed. So my kids are in Rajah Lima and Rajah Empat, of but Ugama. they are a year a year ahead. In age, yeah. Ah. In age, yeah. How long has it been since you guys came back from Oman? We came back in 2020. Oh, baru. Yeah, baru. So now it's like our third year sini lah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresh ni. I thought you've been fresh. doing this for like a long yeah. time. Fresh, fresh. Okay, okay. Marilla. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when you said tadi the students di Oman tu belajar like ugama study satu, is it a separate institution or within the normal academic institution itu? This is interesting. So how the, the how the school started was a small room in the masjid. Okay. Just a masjid, ah, huh? mm. the, the, uh, the masjid is owned by um, a very rich Omani. So it started with a small room, and then as the expert community grew, so the number of students also grew again. Mm. So the um, the owner of the masjid actually expanded the masjid to accommodate the students. So we had more rooms, more facilities. More, um, atula, more utilities oh. made available, and they're all for free. Yeah, like the owner just paid for everything. And the most interesting bit is that we don't know who the owner is, but he wow. just like yeah, yeah. He just like gave everything, like you know, use the masjid. You guys, whenever you need to use it for for mengaji classes ka, for teaching ka, you can just use it. So it's like a private ugama school, ne? Yeah, yeah, private ugama school. Yeah, Ooh, but it's actually, like it's informal. Yeah, tapi structured. Yeah, does that make sense? Just like this interview. Macam cuma ni lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ba. It's informal tapi structured. So we have you know um, this grade, this grade, this grade, and mm. there and it's up to ato up to sixteen, I think. Ah, sixteen. Yeah. So, artinya when they finally finish, um, dorang punya time di sana tu is the certification ataupun whatever no. they receive in the. We, there's no um, I don't like we do have graduation every year. Yeah. Tapi it's informal again, informal. Like okay. we have a gathering and then ah. it's not a certification where you can 
go anywhere because you, okay. it's not a formal school. Yeah. But it's a structured learning at all, learning Institution. school. Institution. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh wait, so then wait, because I also am not sure um about the Ugama school scene. Is it when people when students are based Ugama here, they receive um a certificate. A certificate. Only if they pass the Jahannam. Yeah. Only oh okay, only if they pass the Jahannam and then after that that certificate or sama jo lah like any it's just a piece of paper at the end of the day right okay but i guess macam like sini it's made compulsory kan yes because like we're a, to, i don't know yeah. we're a kira muslim country and mm. stuff like that okay hmm interesting start i'm sl- I, the questions are slowly coming in that's good i like first and foremost i like the idea of having ugama studies um conducted in masjid mm. i i feel like that makes a lot of sense to me it does actually it actually goes back to the son of the prophet because when the prophet established the mosque in medina when he first arrived it was a place where everyone could just it's a place of community mm. where you could come together and you could just you know have discussions to can do your ibadah and and it's a place where everyone comes together yeah. you know and then there are a lot of masjids in the us which they have cafes They have libraries. They have basketball courts. They have rooms where you know if you're if you're at all if you want to rest, you have rooms enough provided. It's like I don't know how to say, it, but it's it's it really fully functions as a community center yeah. where you can do sports, yeah. where you can learn, where you can read, where you can have some coffee with a friend. You know, macam ada pernah kau dengar cerita ke masjid minum kopi? Oh wow! Nadagan. Yeah. But sana it's a place where you where you meet and you can discuss like my, with like-minded people yeah you know? exactly and you can meet people mm. you're like-minded you can have discussions about the religion or you want to learn about the religion you can go there in such an informal setting mm. and at the end of the day you still have something that you can take away about yeah and i think that is something that is missing here yeah can we see the master as, as just a place of worship just a place of worship. yeah instead of being a community based where people can come in and there's someone there who you can talk to exactly. in case someone is you know lost their way exactly oh yeah so in in mas- in certain masjids in USA they made it so open to the fact that you know whoever wants to come in whoever is seeking help guidance just come and talk to anyone and there's mm. always someone there for them mm. and then in the masjid in Turkey where they make it child friendly where they they have playgrounds inside the masjid itself so mm. the mothers can just put the children at the playground they can go do Pray. their prayer mm. so it's some that's the thing i think it's missing is that or also the mindset our mindset is that masjid atu is just untuk ibadah but other than that or ibadah atau tempat kahwin ah like orang tu nikah apa oh yes yeah, but other than that it should be kept strictly cuma tu saja mm. so when what um dulu when we were staying in kb uh sometimes we have to commute um back and forth to bandar and so when i want to solat at when i want to solat uh, isha along the way right if pasaja like eight o'clock the masjid is already closed the gates right the gates are closed yeah. and we're like chimanya where can oh. we pray compared to contrast when we were in oman Masjids are open 24-7. Mm. What, and we always travel to Dubai by car, which is a six-hour ride. So sometimes, kul satu, kul dua, and we just want to freshen up, you know, tired along the road, just sleepy. We want to freshen up. And we just stop by a masjid, use the toilet, salat sekejap, and it's open. Yeah. It's it's welcoming. Macam, that's the function of a masjid. Mm. It, but it welcomes the traveler. It welcomes yes. the the one who needs to rest just for a while mm. but when that when we were commuting back and forth to um from bandar to kb like eight o'clock it to the masjid sudah like mm. Mm, how how are we supposed to meriahkan masjid yeah. when we are refraining people from entering it right and like yeah. only opening it on a certain period of time exactly yeah okay oh wow and then okay so when you so after you came back from oman ato How did you begin or what compelled you to start doing what you did? And I'm still a blurry. I'm not sure what you did actually. What did I do? Yeah. After you came back to Oman. From Oman. Apa yang buat dah? Yeah. Because some people told me like during puasa you do something and then you were also like macam apa? Uh, you coach, uh, you do parenting. 
Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. So when I came, when we came back, it was twenty, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty. So before before we left for Oman, mm. um, I had a shop. Like I design clothes and mm. I make I produce clothes. And then when we moved to Oman, I had to close it. And then we came back here. I'm like, oh gosh, I have a lot of time now. What do I do? Mm. So that was when um, I took parenting coach uh, certification. And then that was when I also started to really be serious with my Quran studies. Okay. So I finished, I've completed my Quran studies. And I'm actually certified by my academy. I'm actually certified to teach. Okay. But by Brunei? Inda. Inda. Okay. At the Saja. So I did this online Quran thing during the during the the second second lockdown. So I did oh. that. Yeah, mm. because you know, much I'm everyone's at home. No, you know, you you have time and it's accessible. So mm. why don't we just do this? Just to keep everyone punya your, your momentum going yeah. when it comes to doing ibadah. That sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So that's how it started. Oh. And then that was and then when at the when the the second lockdown that was also when. I knew how my children were taught in Ugama because everything was online, right? Yeah. You could hear the teachers while they were teaching. And I'm like, mm, this is interesting. This is very interesting. So if you remember, the Sultan made a lawatan mengajut to, to Where? Mora. Okay. So he made a surprise visit to Mora. Mm. And he made a tita. And in one of his, he mentioned his tita that the the um ugama teachers lack in psychology when com- when it te- when it comes to teaching the children and i agree with this totally 100% mm. and also the syllabus needs to change in a, in in a manner in a manner that it suits the psychology of the children mm. you can't teach the children about hell and the threats of hell when they are just in Pra or the jasatu, mm. or at the very young age, it has mm. to be, it has to ikut, itu lah ikut your punya peningkatan, right? Yeah. Your punya age, yeah. because also this goes back to the way the prophet teaches. During the first few, at the first few years, he teaches about love, teaches about kindness, teaches about strength, teaches the about social patience. aspect of exactly. being a human being in a, a human society, guy, right? Exactly. Yeah. So much I'm like, I am a Muslim, but how am I a Muslim? You know, my I'm, my religion is Islam, but how am I a Muslim? How should I how should I behave like a Muslim? How should I think like a Muslim? Mm-hmm. So these are the things I feel are not taught mm. compared to in Oman. Yeah. These are the things that were first taught. Yeah. So we, you you just masuk to this the in Oman do grammar school. You're taught to be kind, to respect your parents. And and they have practical homework every single time, so every time th- every time they come home, they have a practical homework which they have to do. Mm. And I'm like, oh, is this part of your, you know, Ogama school? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have to be kind to animals, feed an animal. So that's the practical homework. Yeah. Okay. Um, or how to udu. Uh, this one of the one of the homework was how to udu with, I think. F- Less than 500 milliliters of water. That is useful. That, because that is where the prophet did. I wouldn't even know how to... I yeah. would just use sand. Can? Yeah. But then there is a way to do that. Mm. To do to to make wudu with less than 500 milliliters. And then we did that for one whole Ramadan. I practiced that with my children. Mm. Yeah. So... And that's useful, you know. Yeah. Because kalau you scared you couple terbang, you want to wudu. Yeah. Yeah. Lacha kan? Like the the whole thing is just yeah, like everyone, yeah. and everyone wants to make udu and the whole thing is like so it's practical in that sense you teach them when they're young mm. it's practical things you teach when and they need it and also something that is deeply rooted with love with kindness with sincerity you know that sort of thing yeah. all these things you cannot yeah. you know they they always say you have to be a class how how to be ikhlas? What is ikhlas? Mm. How do you, how how do you to make embed sure that, that yeah, embed in that in their children, in their children, yeah. not when they're older, yeah. but when they're children. Mm. What does it mean to be ikhlas? There's an interesting story about um, my children. Uh, they think that they can get away with everything because they're children, right? So um, one of them pretended to pray. But wasn't praying, <laughs> which is understandable. Kanak kanak kan. Tapi aku pun pernah. Yeah, ko. semua orang pernah lah. Oh. Macam like udu cuma tu cetu. Macam <laughs> <laughs> basahkan the thing. Yeah. 
uh, urap tikar, pretend to pay, tapi tutup pintu. So, I said, okay, have you prayed? Yeah, sudah. All right. Okay, then. I believe you. The thing about, um, as a parenting coach, is that you have to believe your kids, even though they say otherwise. And even though you know otherwise. Because you need to build that trust with them. Mm. So, okay. Um, I said, thank you for telling me, uh, th- thank you for telling me the truth. Like, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. But I know, kan? I know otherwise. And then, the, the day after, the next day, one of them came to, the, the, the child young, that's all that came to me and said, actually, kumarin, I didn't pray. Oh. And then I said, okay, thank you for telling me. Thank you for being honest. Mm. Why are you telling me now? I said, I remember you said that even though you're not watching, Allah is watching me. Oh, and they bless. were like, Nine, ten years old, and which I'm because we instilled that they're dumb it's yeah. so they know, they know that they are aware that there's always there's always God watching over them. There's always Allah yang melihat orang sentiasa kan. So these are the little things actually. Which I'm, you think it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. It does when they're older and someone says, hey, you know, let's skip school or have a puff or you know do yeah, something that yeah. that. They clearly know it's wrong. Yes. They will say no. My mom may not know, but I know Allah knows. Mm. So it's very dumb. You have to instill this. It's not when they were sad. Yeah. And I always tell them, you should not fear me, but you should fear God. Yes. And it's something that I feel is lacking in our Ugama teachings in school, mm. because it's all about Allah is this, Allah is this, Allah is this. But how do you? Feel that Allah is watching you. How do you feel that Allah is? Um, Allah sends all these uh, all these angels to write down the things that you are doing. How mm. do you make? How do you embed that? Yeah. So this is what the school in Oman taught them, mm. and I'm really thankful that they had that start this Yeah. Because it, when they came back here, it it was that it was easy lah to just adjust everything compared mm. to. What they teach in Ugama schools, like, and and the first few, the first year they came back home, they're like, you know, can we just quit? <laughs> and then and uh, the one thing that I hold on until now is that you know you are enough. You can teach us this. You can teach us Ugama. You are enough. We don't have to go to school. I said I don't have the money to pay the fine if you guys don't go to school. Like, can I find guy? Can I find Dori Bu? Dori Bu kan? Ta. Oh, if you don't send your kids to Ugama for Can school, but how would they know? On oh, the certificate? I'm not sure on the certificate, but I'm sure somewhere, somehow. Eh? Can I find? Because really not compulsory. Because I do feel like I heard people who, friends or cousins who just don't continue. Kalau don't continue, I think different. Kalau oh. nda antar. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But either way, yeah. don't don't quote me on the in the continue and thing. But if nda antar, yeah. For sure, kind of fine. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. At this point, we we're just speculating. We don't we're know. Just okay. So if anyone knows, just say. <laughs> yeah. But I know kalau nak antar, kind of fine. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. So we told them. I said, like, you know, I don't have the money to pay you to pay the fine. So mm. just it's just going to be a couple of years. Let's just bear with it. Mm. But for the first year, they were they were disagreeing with the syllabus. They just it was a it was a difficult adjustment period. For mm. all of us, mm. because it was not what we taught in Oman, but it was what we had to continue teaching in the Brunei because you know they have exams up and everything. Mm. And so like, okay, all right. For example, uh, one of the classic example is dogs. Yeah, dogs can I judge niapa? Ayo, don't get me started on this one. <laughs> I get really passionate about this. We have a dog actually. Okay. Tapi this dog adopted us. Like it was a stray dog, and then mm. he datang ke rumah and just never wanted to leave for cuma tulah. But it's not. It's not it like built a trust with you. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not like we got a dog, but this dog just come over to our house. Mm. And al ato, I know I understand. Sini there's still a stigma about dogs. Uh, it's considered as haram. Where else? The truth of it is, it's not haram. It's just najis. Najis mukhalaza, which is the heaviest najis. So, what I taught my kids, I said, okay. Um, I need it since Oman, actually. Because Oman, there were Omanis who actually, um, I think took care of dogs. Mm. And they actually, um, bella dogs. And we had neighbors who had dogs. So, we taught them, okay, do not fear the dogs. There are, you know, makhluk Allah. 
They deserve kindness. They deserve to be treated with kindness, even though they're strays. So if any of them touch you, lick you, kapa, there's a way to purify yourself. Yep. You don't have to ampas iya ka. You don't have to much am shoo them away. Unless they're aggressive, then yeah, get away from it. Oh, what? Jangan jut lampau. Thank Lord, kan macam. I want to be kind to dogs, but this dog is growling at me. Run away. But then we taught them to be kind to animals. So when the when we when this dog, uh, no no. So we taught them how to purify themselves. Cari soil, wash one time, six times with water. Mm. Fine. So yeah, memudahkan ba. It's it's easy. If you shift that mindset from haram to najis mughalaza, which by right is najis mughalaza, not haram, mm. then you'll be kinder to animals, right? Mm. And not just have all these stories where people just throw yep. these animals away or beat them or just poison them. I think that's cruel. That's mm. not that's not Islam. That's not the what the religion teaches us. Nope. The religion teaches us to be kind to animals. Be kind to all creatures of Allah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So we taught them this and then it's something that is um senior payah lah to actually move away from that stigma that they are najis mm. not haram. Mm. So if and and if they happen to touch you just purify yourself. So we taught the kids how to purify themselves and it's not it's not difficult sebenarnya. Mm. So it's these things that you know teach the teaching kindness it lacks in the syllabus mm. they tell you to be kind but they do not teach you how to be kind mm. they do not show you examples of kindness mm. they do not show you the ways of kindness mm. kan so it's and i know some people will say tapi atu you know ugama sikit saja uh, it's up to the parents to teach them oh as in sambung the lesson at home ka the, the parents, teachings at yeah, home the parents are the one who are supposed to teach them understand this but not but then what's the point of tanya antar ugama if they cannot learn this there right yeah and not every parent is equipped yes. with the knowledge yeah. to teach them this yeah so if if the school say the parents have to teach it at home and the parents say that's why i sent to ugama school in the nyambung oh wow uh, kan? yeah but it's the same like as any subject right if they're not i don't think it's a fair argument for them to say that because macam okay for example like math okay we teach the math at school then now we're going to pass it back to the parents what if the parents doesn't understand exactly. math right exactly yeah like i think the basic foundation you know has to come from both sides the banana mm. yeah and then what is meet, you to, you have to meet halfway you have to make halfway yeah. if th- there is lacking di rumah then that's where the school comes in mm. if there's lacking in schools then t- the kids can go back home and say like ask lah macam oh kenapa 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 like there has to be a connection there and i do believe that there is there is no here in brunei there's no connection between the parents and the schools it's like once the parents drop off the kids it's the school's responsibility jadinya and i feel like teachers are feeling that and teachers some of them it becomes a burden tapi yes. sama juga once the students leave school go back home it's like sama juga it's like the <laughs> there's no connection there wa yeah yeah and i do understand i mean it can topics like this like um especially when it comes to education i'm very very passionate about this because i'm living proof that i do believe that there is a huge flaw in ugama schools because when i was growing up i did not really understand why i had to go ugama school how ata how how long were you in ugama school i finished from dari dari ya dari darjah 1 sampai darjah 5 6 6 6 ka 6 oh okay i always thought that ugama school ada kurang satu darjah indah ka no no so ah okay pra yeah. and then until 6 <laughs> ugama school okay. mana tu what is the one single thing that you remember from ugama school the only i okay the only thing i remember at ugama school was nothing about the teaching of islam it's more like the experience mm. yeah the experience of me kalau boleh tak aku mau ke ugama school i just it was i was there for fun i was there for fun i was there to meet 
like my friends. I was there to bali makanan kantin. Oh, <laughs> exactly like our children. Yeah, na- literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the same thing. My kids go. My kids go to Ugama School because ada kawan mm. and because ada makanan kantin. Yeah, and makanan kantin yang kami inda allow. <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the only time they are. Yeah. They, and this they is die. after they've experienced Oman. Oman kan? Yeah. I've never experienced Oman, and I felt that way. So much. Um. But the thing is, this is where I can understand where you receive criticism for saying that Ugama School has flaws. It's because, payah ba? Like, much. Um. They breed. There are some students who are successful, who are okay, that come out of. The same Ugama school that I went to, so much um when they see me and them, they still see it as okay. It's actually still okay. I'm the problem, not the Ugama school, young problem. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I get it. Unless semua orang macam aku, then maybe they'll start to consider like maybe there's something wrong with Ugama ni. Uh, Ugama punya But you'd be ni. surprised how many people actually felt the same way. I know they f- they feel the same way. And yeah. then when it when that thing happened to me when mm. I criticized and I got you know a lot of DMs, everyone said the same thing. Anak na mosko skula, they hate ugama. They it really much I'm like you have to force them to go to school. They don't like the teachers. The teachers are too angry, too garang. And there's one of my friends um, because her, her her daughter started her period early. And I'm, I don't think men experience this, but then there are some Ugama teachers who actually demand proof that you are on your period. Male teachers or female teachers? Both. Is that necessary? Apparently. Apparently you can't believe these children that they're having their period. I don't think that's right. It's not right. But this is something that goes on, that goes on that's still going on. And a friend of mine had your punya your punya daughter was really young, nine years old, and she started a period, which is by by ugama book definition, cannot cannot badlil start sembilan tahun, mm. both male female, nine years old they can start. So this girl got her period at nine years old, and the teacher doesn't believe her, like you're lying. <laughs> How can a teacher say that? Mm. That's that's what the that's what Sultan said, lacking in psychology. How can you accuse a child of lying, a nine-year-old child of lying, when she says she has a period, and she is having a period? Mm. So what my friend did was like monitor her cycle, and then told the teacher these are the days that she will have a period. This is the calendar. Mm. Forward to the teacher. Mm. If you have any problem with my child having her period, please come and talk to me. Mm. Don't accuse my child of lying. Mm. Yeah. And the teacher say the ambil matlam to suggest. Yeah. No apologies. No nothing. For me, that is that is borderline abusive to actually ask for proof that you are on a period. Mm. I get it. There are some 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 students would lie their way out of solat. Yeah. I understand. But let them. They're how, kids. How can I? Th- how can you? How can you ask for proof? Chima to. Alba. Yeah. That This is happens. insane. You know the most outrageous stories I hear about students experiencing abuse verbally sexually are from ugama schools and i feel like not enough conversations are being initiated are being created just because it is under the ministry of religious affairs i do not i feel i don't feel comfortable with the idea that just because it's under the ministry of religious affairs no conversation can be started and nothing should be done about it you'd be surprised how you'd be surprised how they feel that they're They're superior than everything everything else yeah no that's not how us as a muslim country should progress and i'm so when when sultan made that tita about the um syllabus or apa, that needs to be revised i was so happy i have a niece and two nephews who are going to start ugama school soon and i am terrified for them i was terrified for my children when they started ugama school i kept praying that they'll have good teachers they do alhamdulillah Um, but not everyone is lucky mm. to have good teachers, and I I know I know that sometimes by luck, sometimes by opportunities. But to have to have a teacher to actually care about you as a person, not just another student, mm. it's a very kejarangan, kejarangan, yeah. very very rare. Mm. So I'm not saying that Ugama school is bad. But I do saying that I do say that in 
something needs to be changed. Yeah, there's always and room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. Nothing stays the same. Mm-hmm. For example, you know, much I'm like, najis bungala zahatu. How to purify? We learn from the books. Uh, pakai, apa? Pakai soil, right? Nowadays, you can buy soap. Mm-hmm. Yang ada the that's a that's a soap called suci, mm-hmm. where you can use it um, instead of soil, and it's friendly. Like you know, you can just it's in a tube. You can put it all over the house. So we have three tubes. We have one di atas, one di bawah, and one outside. Mm-hmm. So in case macam like the kana the dog or any of the nudges, then we can just purify it quickly instead of digging for soil. Why not include that in that though in the syllabus? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not changing. It's not introducing something new. It's an update. Yeah. And updates are needed. Yeah. You know. And I think that's what some people are terrified about because as the world progresses, especially in um, technological advancements, they feel the need to still stay. They feel like it's not right if we update the way we do things or much um improve. Improving and updating is necessary, even yeah. in the syllabus of teaching. You know, the, my my academy, um, we're always like, bef- when I started, AI wasn't a thing. When I started le- uh, studying, AI wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm. So o- AI only became a thing like recently, right? Mm. So the teachers, they all, they were, you know, they were, they had a workshop. They were taught how to teach, how to talk to the students about using AI in their in, the, in their assignments. Mm. So in our um, introductory, uh, not introductory, which I'm before we start a course, apa nama itu? But basically, it's, it's a briefing. So the, all the teachers were briefing all the students that uh, we understand AI is a current technology, and we understand that there is uh, apa ni? There sometimes you might need to use it. So mm-hmm. this is how you can use it to mm-hmm. your advantage. And also to not be considered as cheating. Yeah. So much I'm like, this is a religious academy, but they mm. accept that that technology is there, and you can't run away from it. Yeah. So let's how let's learn how to use it properly. Mm. So there are certain things that you can use, certain things you cannot use. Mm. For example, if you want to cite um, a hadith from the Prophet, mm. you cannot use AI. You have to actually look at the the sources. You mm. know, find something that is. You want to find it credible, kind that you can. You know, pull it up from AI, but you have to do your own research. Mm. It's not selama lamanya macam like okay, everyone nabeh pakai AI. Mm. No, we cannot use your chat GPT. You cannot use that or anything that is um, computerized. Mm. Cannot kan? Mm. Everyone will use it either way. Yeah. And if a student cheats and use it, guilty je rasanya tu. But this teacher say this is the permission. However, there are restrictions and these are the things allowed and not allowed. Mm. Simple. Oh, ba. Yes. Before we continue this, I want to I want to go back to your experience. What exactly did you say or do sampai you were being called? Take us to that day. <laughs> it was I was teaching uh, my son had a had a exam the day before. Uh, the night the day the, the next day. So I was teaching him, you know, what he has to memorize. Mm. Because let's face it, everyone memorizes Ugama. No one actually, no one actually understands. Everyone memorizes Ugama, mm. which is something I feel that needs to be changed as well. Mm. So he was, uh, we were going through the the book, and it says um, something to the uh, something to the to the effect that if you do something wrong, you'll be immediately thrown into hell. Oh my God. As a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old, how would you feel? Terrified, like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> like literally, yeah. yeah. Compared to what we learn in Ugam, in 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 Oman, mm. if you make a mistake, you ask God for forgiveness. Yes. And these are the steps to ask for forgiveness. Mm. Number one, leave the sin. Make the intention to leave the sin. Number two, you make istighfar. You make as many istighfar as you can. Number three, if you are able to, you do the solat taubat. Number four, purify your intentions and ask Allah to accept everything. Mm. Oh my God! This is what they teach. Atipun sa jom dengar. Atu pun macam aku ada chance masuk syurga. Yeah, mata, and you want people to feel and that. And you want people to enter syurga, yeah. right? Syurga is huge, guys. There's room for everyone. Why do we have to throw someone in hell mm. for no absolute reason? So that I commented and I got 
And then I didn't know it went viral sebenarnya. Where, how did you, where did you like um, say it or comment? Someone told me it went viral. Yeah. And then I said, what went viral? Mm. It's like, this went viral. And I was like, oh my God. About okay. a video ka? It was auto, IG story. Okay. So it went viral. And I was like, oh, okay. I I didn't think much of it. I didn't, I because I've been viral before. So it took me much, I'm like, okay. We need to explore that too. <sighs> Yeah. It seems that the things that I go viral for are the things related to religion. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then and then it went viral, and then I was like, oh, okay. To the point, uh, I only know I only knew it went viral after you no know, when at the when my friend told me, I brushed it aside, and then my son, my teacher, called me, and said that did I do something wrong, and I was like. What did you do? I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know. We, we, she was talking. I was like, did I like? Did I? Did I not know how to cheat? Is that? I was like, no. I think you did fine. I was like, I don't know. I don't know why you're asking me this. She's like, I didn't do anything wrong. I said, no, I did. No, you didn't. So okay, hung up. But that was very cryptic, you know. Much I'm like, mm. I didn't do anything wrong. What did you do wrong? Which I'm, did I teach right? Thing? What was the tone? Yeah, it was at the scared. Oh. Yeah, he was scared. It was a scared tone. So I was like, mm. oh, okay. And I left it. And then um, <laughs> my son came back to from Ogama and said, Umi, you went viral. And I was like, what? Yeah, you went viral. And I was like, okay. Why? I don't know. What did you say? And I, was <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't say anything. But then that, that was like, after that, there were like a lot of messages coming in hate messages like one after the other and they were all bashing me and they wanted me to just like <gasps> unalive myself and i, just, ah, I know and there were there, it was nasty nasty things it was really really bad to that point and i was like oh my god what is going on like why are you guys attacking me like why what did i say young salah mm. which is you know shouldn't teach people shouldn't teach children at this age that they don't have a chance of forgiveness. Pa. Mm. And that's where the Tita of the Sultan comes in. Teach the children with psychology. The syllabus has to be taught with psychology as well. And that the psychology of a young children like this, who still, who still must say at that point, they're still not accountable for their sins. Pa. Mm. Anything they do, they're forgiven mm. because they're not accountable for their sins. Mm -hmm. So don't you want to teach them at that age where they're still not accountable for their sins, like they have a chance of forgiveness. They have a chance of turning back to Allah, even after they have done something wrong. Mm. So when they're older, like us, at this age, mm. we know what to do. Mm -hmm. In the I'm like, oh, this is it. This is the end of me. There's no turning back. I cannot go on. In the, mm. Until this very age, the steps are still there. Make the intention to leave the sin. Do you extigfar? Make salat. And, you know, Make the intention to not repeat the sin again. It's mm. still the same. Their David like Basar, you can still use his four steps. Well. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we taught in in Oman, but yeah. it was not taught here. Yeah. So bila bercanga, of course lah. I will say this is not right. Mm. So because I say it's not right, then I was told that I was not right. Okay. So, um, how did you say it? How did I say it? Oh, I said that this is not what we believe. Okay. And I think it was misconstrued too. This is not what we believe as in like, this is not my Akida. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you assume people are reading it as. Like, yes. Based on the messages that you got. Yeah. That is insane. Someone actually told you to unalive yourself? Yes. That's really that. It was, that, it was to that point. This is what I'm talking about. Like, if that person is a practicing Muslim and saying that to another Muslim instead of trying to... If they thought you were at the wrong path, they didn't even bother trying to get you to the right path. They just told you to die. Yeah. And then there were a lot of swearing. A lot of swearing words. A lot of swearing. How are they thinking that this is the right way to like, reach someone? Exactly. Which I'm like, I know you're angry, but... You don't don't use these words on me. Like don't don't use those mouths to say these words. Don't type these words. I know you're angry, but refrain. Like uh, like Atullah, is this and then you know it goes by, is this what your six years of gamma teaches you mm. to do to say these things? Yeah. To say because when when I was called in, 
the people who were told, the people who who you know were in the room with me they said that oh wait so let's do this chronologically okay, okay. so you got all those those heads, ha- hate messages mm. and then how many days after that did you get a call oh, two months later oh two months later it wasn't a call it was a letter oh my God, that's formal. when you know it's serious. It was a formal letter. Yeah, and I said, "Jin da ah here sampai leta to." Eh, eh, to it was because it was addressed to my mom's house. Okay. But I think I, I think I was sampai kali. It's just that ah, uh, you received it later. Yeah, I received later. Do you remember having a conversation with your husband about it the, when you went viral? My husband is very chilled. Okay. He always say, mm, "Okay to." Ah. Uh. <laughs> He's very, very chill. He's like, okay, too. no worries. You're safe. You're safe. I'll say, I'll, I'll protect you. He's, okay. he's like that. He's my safety net. Mm. So he comforts me and supports me. Okay. And say that we can get through this together. Mm. So did anybody like try to talk to you about that? Mm. Nada. No one approached you. No one approach. Oh no. S- okay. Interesting. Mm. Um, okay, so after you received that letter, what happened? Um, we got called to a certain date, and then after that, um, we got COVID. It was the first time I got COVID, so I told them that I got COVID, and mm. they're like, "Okay, postpone." Do you remember what the letter sounded like? Um, you are called in because you violated this law, and then it mentioned the the law. The law, yeah. Okay, mm. and then it was properly signed by yeah. somebody. Yeah. Okay. That's a formal letter. It was That's a formal a letter. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Did you, did that prompt you to check with anybody from the legal department to make sure yeah, that you? Did, yeah, okay. we did. Yeah, we did. We did. Did we you? Did they say you did break a law? Um, it wasn't at all. It wasn't. It wasn't an accusation. This is what they say. It wasn't accusing me. It was just trying to find out the truth. Ah, okay. Yeah, so okay. basically, they're saying like, look, you may have violated this. So let's. Call you in and talk and see if yeah. you okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then you got COVID. And then, and then COVID. And then we thought, okay, COVID. Then they're gonna leave me alone. In that two weeks after we finish COVID, they call me and said, okay, you have to come in now. Okay. So okay, all right. So we come in and then, um, I was said to I was I uh, cannot I I asked like could I bring a lawyer and check out in the bule? You have to be alone. And I said okay. So went to the uh, went to this room, and there were four people inside, two people outside, and and I'm not in. I cannot divulge what actually happened in happened in that room. Mm. What went on? However, I'm very thankful that I had that I was um, uh, taught by my father, or more like prepped by my father, uh, who was a police officer. So he actually, well, he at the, when he was alive, I used to ask him questions about how does he interview or how does he interrogate suspects and everything. So you sh- he would always tell me what are my rights. So Kiranya, I got called in as a suspect. What are my rights? Like well, sh- I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't answer this. I shouldn't answer this. So I'm very thankful that you applied that. I applied that, and I'm and the thing was that I caught them trying to violate those rights. Mm. So it's like, um, for example, there were additional questions after I agreed to this the list of questions, and I, and then they said that these are the additional questions that you have to answer. I said, but those are the questions that were included after I signed, so I do not agree to answering those. Mm. And then they kept quiet. Which I'm, okay, all right. So there were a few things that I had to apply, like I had to apply and to get myself. Not out of trouble, but Protected. to protect myself. Okay. Yeah. And then because <laughs> I was unsatisfied, the the way that they they said it was a interview, but it was more of an interrogation, mm. not an interview. They said that they were trying to find out the truth, but they already had formed their own biases, mm. and they were accusing me of with their biases. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Are you interviewing me or interrogating me?" And it got heated for a while. Yeah, and I refused to answer because I said, unless you're going to do it properly, I'm not going to answer. So it was got heated, and then at the end of it, after I got out, <laughs> I told my husband, like we have to write a letter to the head of the department to say that they 
the way that they conduct themselves, these officers conduct themselves, were not adhering to the um, the protocol of interviewing. And I did write a letter and attach a folder of the protocol of interviewing as agreed by United Nations and submit it to them. So we haven't heard anything back. No, no. Oh no, my we haven't. God. So yeah. It was I'm intense. Just, it was intense. Yeah, I, I'm okay. This is like I'm just trying to understand where they are coming from. Mm. Like, I can tell you where they're coming from. Okay, they believe that um, I did a mistake, a huge one, by co- by criticizing the Ugama syllabus. Mm-hmm. They said that I shouldn't have done it um, publicly. They said mm-hmm. that I should have gone to the the government syllabus department, I don't know what they call it, JPI, I think, and tell them personally what's wrong with the government syllabus. Mm. They, said, they said, this is the proper route. This is the way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Then, but why? Okay. So I can understand if they've seen you made a mistake, but why? I don't understand. That's also another thing. If someone calls in to complain yeah. about you, they are they they they're obligated to call you in. So someone must have called in to make a complaint. Uh. Mm. Because you never received that call with Porsche, right? No. No. No one complained. Yeah. So no basically, one. that was the post that also got me back in touch with you. Because I think a lot of people sent me that post. Oh, they they literally just yeah, yeah, yeah. link it, and I was like, "Ah, pakane!" Like <laughs> the link, but joke too. I was like, obviously they want me to click it. Like, aku ni pun macam kalau scammer, ku click juga. Tapi it was from a few of the listener punya loyal. Fo- so I trust them. I mm. trust that it was not just a random mm. link. So I clicked on it, and it was your atu kan your mm. macam IG story. At that point, you haven't fully completed your story. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I don't understand was, what was, she was. It was like uh, it was like a I think four minute video pulang. So it was oh, wow. long. But basically, I was listening to your to your to, to your. Um, podcast where you answer questions. Yes, and then, and then you and Fuad said that you guys got never got called, and Fuad said that you know, like in, in terms of podcasts, you have the freedom. So I remember that, mm. and I was like, never got called. What? Mm. Kidding me? I got called twice. Yeah, you know, and 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 it's 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 compared to what Posh said in the podcast, he was, chum. Yeah. Nothing compared to what you had to learn. Yeah, there's nothing. Okay, so here's the thing. With the Posh episode, I think people saw it. There is Segi Islam. It's a success story. That's what we thought. Yeah, that's, that's his what, journey. Yeah. Eh? So yeah. macam dari chato and then lepas tu mm. go back to the jalan yang lurus. But also in in him declaring what he did at the... Yeah. Macam, if we see it from that, you know, point of view, mm. like it's a success story, it is... I know that about it. I know hate to posh really. I yeah. I enjoy that one too. Yeah. Because it was like I went through like a cycle of emotions, like roller coaster emotions, like listening to that one. Mm. And that, I think that's one of your most um engaging uh podcasts. But at the same time, I'm like, I did this mm. and then I got called in. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it was sort of like mm. Yeah. Okay. And the other, and that was the first one. The second one was just like you know, kalau kalau masa puasa kan, we all do. You know, we have our own circle of, um, pani uh, Quran recitation. We have yeah. our own uh, what you call it, khatam. Okay. We have our own khatam circles. Everyone everyone does it. Everyone does it at home. But for some reason, I got called and said I can't do it because of what. It's like no, we just receive a complaint, so you have to, you have to, you have to. Um, Stop your Quran circle. I mean, not stop your Khatam circle in okay. Ramadan. And I'm like, a lot of people are doing it. I'm not the only one. I, is everyone getting this the same call? Like, you're not allowed to do this Khatam circle. So, the conclusion is, after discussing with my friends, I'm going to post mutam about this, is that Orang Kliponani just have a, just doesn't like me. Mm. People who called in, who complain about me, just doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. Which is... For me, you don't yeah. like me, you don't like me. Okay. It's not a problem with me. But help me understand more about this Quran circle and is it different from the usual? Like what what, yeah, what is this? What activities do you do? It's just this? reading Quran, my and friend. And how did other people 
came to know about it for Because them to make a complaint this Quran circle was different in the sense that it catered to mothers okay mothers are particularly very busy people yes especially in Ramadan odd hours waking up sleeping and then functioning you have to function the same on little sleep little food little coffee and then you don't you're so busy you just don't have time for yourself so I told these mothers like okay look at this time let's just commit to just one hour of just sitting down reading the Quran even if you're not reading if you just buka your ato buka the audio and listen in that's fine mm. just online one, can I? online okay. just one hour commit yourself yeah ato saja so it was a bunch of us taking turns reading reading the Quran it was a proper khatam ba okay how you do khatam kan one, one by one kan yeah yeah So the conclusion is that it's just that people called like whoever called in it's just that in the sukaku at such a Okay maybe they were trying to find an angle where or oh, if you guys want to do khatam maybe you have to have some ustaz or ustaza there to guide you How many ustaza are available to do khatam honestly mm. They're limited the ustaz the asatiza Especially during puasa kala Exactly yeah. asatiza in Brunei are limited mm. and they're making it harder to be certified mm. like Okay So how are you supposed to If they don't have a list, they don't have a list where they say any adalah certified ustaz saja that you can call in to sit in your khatam. Yeah. Who has the time? There are yeah. a lot of khatam circles. Okay. I'm not inviting people to do anything else except to read the Quran. Yeah. How is this a big mistake? Okay. And then so you decided to stop anyway. I just had to stop. What happens if you didn't stop? Was there any consequences being told to you if you continued? Um I was told that they they were to, they will check action. I didn't I don't know what action they will take but it's just enough for me to okay stop. say okay all right to such a okay uh, because I'm trying to understand right okay now that it makes a little bit of sense how they got to you is through potentially through a complaint mm. right tapi what I'm trying to understand and I'm failing to understand is that if someone makes a complaint how are they sure that the complaint is legitimate and the complaint is on the right side because based from what you told me right and then they called you in to interrogate you and it sounds like they've already formed their own biases so that's why i'm it's making me question like I have what no is idea. the motive i do Be- i have no idea how they determine whether it's right yeah the complaint is right or, or wrong. wrong like did yeah. they actually investigate so that's the thing they have to investigate kind oh, yeah so i to suggest so but the investigation was more like an interrogation more than an interview you felt for, like for the for the quran the the quran khatam mm. i think this i think the the person who complained just asked at the, just provided evidence because must have the interrogation yeah Um, they had like a folder of screenshots, <laughs> a folder of screenshots. Okay. Yeah. So and then I recognized all the screenshots and I was like, "Did you post it? Yeah. Did you post it? Yeah. Post it? Yeah." I was like, "Can just keep asking. I'll say yes. I'm not going to deny. Mm. Why for? I'm already here." Okay. So it's um. I told them at one point. I said, "I'm already here, willingly, without a lawyer mm. present." Mm. The, and I'm not going to lie like mm. what there's the, there's no there's no reason for me to lie mm. I'm going to tell you how it is mm. so you just have to be nice to me and mm. don't start accusing me with this with this tone mm. use your words properly ba mm. instead of just chamara mara and start accusing mm. and Oh and God. you not ref- and you refusing are you choosing to not divulge is a personal choice or being told not to say anything to the public because i haven't got a um letter to say the investigation is has concluded also oh, it's ongoing kan cuma itulah okay one thing i have to say is that whoever calls in to complain about a person a book or anything mm. they will the dollar the, the the ministry will act upon okay so sekarang it's a bookshop yang jual buku islam mm. and then it doesn't have chop yeah they will be kada agala Ah. Uh, so, so but then that's I think that's how they do their investigation whether to ascertain whether it is a truth or a lie. Mm, mm. Okay. Tala. Interesting. Very. Yeah. The more you know. I'm sorry you went through that. 
because um, from this conversation, I can tell that you're only trying to do uh, what you think is right. And I feel like that's what's lacking in their side because they didn't bother trying to see or trying to understand you. Because now, like, I have the liberty of having you here and hearing what you went through, like, your studies and what you experienced in Oman. And hence why when you ex- when your child experienced that, you, like, question it, right? Mm. But I mean, if only they took the time to hear you out, I think their opinions would have been um, different. Instead what? of seeing it like an offensive thing, it's like you are speaking from your experience. And, yeah, uh it's it's unfortunate but i also want to remind everyone who's watching right now that th- easy does it operates on a um base where i provide a platform for everyone to share their story right i'll try to be as neutral as i possibly can because the mission is to unearth stories experiences okay i'm not criticizing mora or whatever I have the right to question and I have the right to suggest improvements maybe but I just don't want people to get the wrong idea about me having you here and asking you to tell us what happened because this is purely from your POV. Yes. Right? It is an skewed yeah. POV because it's my experience. Yeah. And not and you actually have to know how I think and I how I view things so actually See it from, yeah, to understand from my point of view. Yeah, and that's what I always try to do. Whoever is sitting across me, I always ask them to tell me their upbringing up as well to understand. But because not everyone, we need to encourage diverse of thought. Yes, not agree. It's just not one thing. Mm. If you think something is right, the next person thinks you're wrong. You don't have to hate each other. Exactly. You can exactly. just coexist. And move on. Yeah, and move on. You know, I I was I was making a joke because I I thought. After you told me to come on, so I would post it on my IG story and uh, NGL. Um, you know, if Izzy does invite me, what should I talk about? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I don't know if you. Was Someone sent, sent me a screenshot that. of that one. Yeah, it's like oh, Prasen Joko, then like and everything. And I'm like, dude, if you don't like me, just move on. You know, you don't have to. It takes a lot of effort to be mean to think about what to say, the mean things to say, to mm. say the things that you think that will hurt me, mm. but. You can just like, okay, this girl is being present. Mm. She thinks she's all that. Let her be. Yeah. You know, you have that option, ba. Mm. And we all think about that about someone one way or another. Like, you know, we see something like, present, joy. But you don't have to go like, I'm gonna tell her that you're present. Yeah. No. Yeah. Be the better person. Move on. Mm. You don't have to, you don't have to leave all these comments anonymously again. Mm-hmm. Just, just so that you think that you you're going to prove a point. Mm. No. People always forget that there's another human being on the other side, and that person have feelings too. And yeah. in this case, they are talking to a woman, a mother, who is trying to just make sure that their kids get the right lessons exactly. in life. I mean, if I were if I were to have the choice, if I were to be given the choice, I would not send my kids to grammar school. I am f- fully equipped to teach them at home. Mm. Fully equipped. Because when I was in Oman, I was part of the teaching um, teaching body mm. of the Ugama school. Mm. So I had the syllabus, I have mm. the books, I have everything. Mm. I can teach my kids at home. And my kids are more than happy to stay at home and let me teach them because that's what that was what I've been doing when we were staying in Oman. Mm. Not only do they have the Ugama once a, once a week, mm. they also have me at home teaching them the religion in a nice, in a friendly, in a loving way. Mm. So right now, like Doron Raja Ampat Raja Lima, they've just they haven't. In term, uh, one of the one of the topics is Sejarah Islam, which is um, Tareh. Tareh. Yeah, actually, that's one of my favorite subjects in school. Do you like it? Mm, tareh, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed it because um, that is one way for me to like. Actually, I was very inspired by Nabi Muhammad and his um, comrades' punya uh, stories. Mm. And I think that was the only thing that I enjoyed in Ugama school because you get to see from from their le- from my lens, I get to see how kind Nabi Muhammad is, how forgiving yes. he is. Yes. And I said, it. I understand why he it was is the prophet because of who he is and how he represents Islam, how he is Islam. And I remember thinking like, macam, but orang Islam yang ku kenal, nada pun macam. 
I'm not saying it should be exactly like, because he is perfect. Yes. He is the only person. But we who should we can emulate say. some of the things that yes. he has. Yeah. And he has shown. Yeah, he has shown so that compi- compassion, kindness that towards part, his enemies. Even yeah, that yeah. part was was excluded uh, from the syllabus. So in Oman, I taught them from the ve- from the beginning to the end. Abisida, mm. our story of the Prophet. We finished it, and Gamba Dorang baru started. Mm. And they were like showing me don't be a gamma book. It's like point form number one, number two, number three, number mm. four, number mm. five. Mm. It wasn't a story form. Mm. It wasn't in a, f- in a storytelling way. Mm. It wasn't in a way that that could make them, like, ah, oh, apa lagi? What's next? Mm. What happens next? Mm. What happens next? Mm. Why this? Why that? Nada. So in Oman, we had that. We had the syllabus of the you know learning the pro- the prophet's life from beginning to end. Went through that already, and then for for each phase of his life, we learn that what can we do, what can we learn from this, what can we do, what can we practice in our daily lives, what can we learn, what can we practice in daily life. So much I'm like, that's part about um, having patience when the prophet was you know had to face all these trials, having patience, mm-hmm. trust in Allah mm-hmm. when he faced trials, you know he was stoned, and then the pro- angels came and said that, you know. Shall we crush this village in between the two mountains? And Prophet said, "No. One day they will become Muslims. Mm. Patience, tawakal, trust in Allah." And then when the Prophet had to leave Namaka to leave the, the home country, uh, his his the place where he grew up, he lived in. What what do we have to learn, Sana? That at some at some point you may like something, you may love something, but you have to leave it for the sake of. Your iman, mm. so all these things that you know I taught them along the way, mm. and suddenly this thing is like one, two, three, four. There's no storytelling. There's no. There's no exercises. There's no you know. There's, I find that it's very dry. Mm. There's no heart in it, mm. and the only thing that would make a difference is a teacher mm. who will actually tell it like the storytelling way, in a way that it would capture the students' punya attention, attention yeah. in a way that it would make them enjoy mm. the seerah. Mm, mm, mm. And that is something that we lack in. And mm. there are, n- not not to dismiss, but there are teachers who do this. Yeah. There Actually, are teachers. I want to mention also, even though I say Ugama schools, it doesn't mean that I'm generalizing them and I'm not saying all Ugama teachers are not doing their jobs. They are golden teachers out there who yeah. care about their students who care about the education and the knowledge that they pass on to their students who take good care of the students but with every you know kami ni manusia ada cikgu yang baik ada juga cikgu yang tidak baik and that applies to every and it applies to everywhere everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. school yes. school like the not the secular schools pun they have teachers yang bagus teachers yang bagus yeah. it's everywhere but it's just why i feel that this is more important is because It is the religion, you know. It is something that, it is something that is something that you carry for the rest of your life. Mm. You know the things that you study. You you study in in non ugama school like this. I call it secular school. You you there are some subjects you bawa sampai you know you're old. There are some subjects you just leave. Mm. But in in Islam, every subject matters. Yeah. You, know, you bring it until you, the day you, bring you die. Until you die. Yeah. And six years is not enough, but I do understand why six years saja. However, I do have um, this one thing. I thought this one thing. This uh, this is pure suggestion, because mm. now my son will be in year nine. Uh, no, next year he'll be in year nine, and you typically year nine is when ugam atau Muslim students abis ugama sudah. They don't they finish sudah ugama, so. In year nine, one of the subjects that every Muslim student must take is IRK, Islamic religious, uh, Islamic religious mm. knowledge. And in my sc- in the in my Sampnya school particularly, the non-Muslim students have the option to take business studies, and the Muslim student ha- only can take IRK, okay. not business studies. So the question is, what is the relevance of IRK when they have finished the Jahannam, mm. sini? Instead of IRK sitting down and learning more, why not make it something relevant to what they will be able to use mm-hmm. at the at that old age, uh, at that teen age? Mm. For example, communist community service, um, emulating the prophet's punya behaviors. Mm-hmm. You know, have a few hours of community service, train kindness, show compassion, that sort of thing, or maybe an extension of faraid. Mm. 
mm. you know how to properly how, how to properly um calculate faraid mm. once you get older or extension of zakat how to properly mm. because at the, sometimes that you basar sudah kan you go like how to calculate zakat ah like what is the percentage yeah. it's still a question people still google what is the percentage mm. of zakat yeah. what is the perc- uh, how much do you have to have to pay zakat or maybe um islamic finance instead of business studies mm. then the students can go the muslim students can do islamic finance mm. at least something that is practical instead of sitting down and just learning lagi yeah. something that they will be able to use mm. throughout their whole life mm. and, I, and i think this is something that you know they should be looked into mm. why the non muslim students can do business studies and muslim students can only do irk irk mm. have an option if If business studies for the Muslim, non-Muslim at all, mm. non-Muslim students, maybe Islamic finance for the Muslim students, mm. then both of them are financially savvy, mm. Mm. which is mm. something that the population needs mm. to be financially savvy, mm. especially now we are entering, you know, towards the age of inflation and, you know, trying to save, trying to invest. Everyone, this yeah, this is the, useful. The, the, the government is also pushing for the youth to start businesses. So it'll exactly. be useful. It'll be useful. Kan? So if you financially savvy, yeah. Islamic finance, financially mm. savvy, you know, much I'm like, okay, um, you don't know about what are halal investments, what mm. are the categories of halal investments. Mm. You start young. Yeah. So maybe, you know, and then at that age, I'm sure parents bagi duit sudah, mm. bagi allowance apa. Maybe at that age, the parents, you know, you can say, like, hey, mom, dad, mm. look, this is the things that I aim for when I wanna. What do you think? Mm. Can we can we invest in this? Also, mm. you know, start my my um, university funding by investing halal. Yeah, there are options. Mm. But why do we have to much um stick to IRK saja? There are options where we can make our our to our Muslim students more in touch with the Dean mm-hmm. and combining it with the dunia punya dunia yeah. punya education. Mm. I think that's it. Though. I yeah. think that should be looked into. After they said that, oh, you shouldn't criticize, um, uh, apa tu publicly and like should actually just uh try and speak to them privately. Have you tried? No. Okay. So hopefully after this, instead of seeing what we're doing as like, like uh, I don't know, we're not even it's it's purely a discussion, right? But I do hope like instead of trying to immediately, um. What's that word that I'm trying to look for? Instead of trying to immediately see this as a threat or whatever, I I do hope like um, productive discussions can happen after this because I do feel like now speaking to you, it's like it's not even you're. It's just tr- suggesting ways that can be improved. Yeah. But I think I do understand why there are some ministries yang a bit touchy when it comes to this because even in the education sector, I have a lot of friends who are teachers. They're only sebenarnya overworked. They're tired. Oh, yes. It's not easy sebenarnya jadi cikgu, and we all Definitely. know that. And I think that's where sometimes the anger comes from. Like mm. they feel like they're so that they're overworked. Uh, like kind of criticize lagi. It's mm. like macam bah, nanti kami buat apa yang kami buat ni nanti pandai lurus ni. Yeah. Like macam you know. Understand. So I do, I do want people to know that we're not holding them accountable, but it's more like towards the people in the position of power. Yeah. To do something exactly. to exactly. suggest improvements. You know, if if they could have a feedback session, like you know, have a session, a feedback sessions from parents, and say, okay, how do you find your children? Mm. How do you find their learning? How do you feel that there are what are the ways to improve? If there is a way to give a feedback session, mm. because how do you continue with the syllabus for so long? And not have any changes. Nada kan ada orang complain. Nada nada. Did no one say anything that is like this needs to be changed? This mm. it, you need to you need to follow. Pe edaran zaman kan. You know there are changes. And it's and like like we said earlier, it's not 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 moving away. It's just updating. Mm. It's just including the new the new the the new knowledge. Mm. Because even even nado even in for example in my in my field of studies, which is um, memorizing the Quran, our Tajwid teacher will say, oh no, there's a new scholar, uh, there's a scholar who says that this ruling is such and such because of this and such. So I said, okay, the, there's a change in the ruling because of such things. And we accept it because it was a, it was a, there was evidence, they they provided evidence, this is how it's done, this is the study. So okay, all right, we accept it. So, not to say that 
tukar suka hati. Tapi please take into account that we are raising children who are more exposed to things that are non-Islamic yeah. than Islamic. That is the one that's like a bit anukan. And we want to catch their attention. Yes. We want them to make sure that they have strong akida. Yep. That even without the parents around, they know what is right and wrong. Mm. We want to have children like that. Yeah. We don't want them to selama-lamanya harapkan orang to bagi tahu orang ani salah, ani dah salah. Mm. Or, the, or they don't know. They know if it's wrong or if it's right. Mm. So, the Ugama school, I do, like I, I'm not saying that Ugama school is wrong. I welcome them. I think they are very much needed for those who have parents who don't have the time to teach their own children. Yeah. It's much needed. Mm. But at the same time, Try to listen to the parents who are tr- crying out for help, mm. trying to make a change, mm. who wants better for their children. Mm. And they can't, they can't do anything because they can't quit their jobs and teach their kids because mm. they need to go, go to work. Yeah. And then we have these other, and then they can't, you know, they can't, and, and at the same time, they can't leave it totally to the Gamma school because it's not fulfilling what, what it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah. So meet halfway. Mm. You know, like the like Sultan said in his tita, change is needed. Mm. You need to you need to include the psychology now. Even in his tita, he said that you know, some Gama schools are so scary that children don't want to come to school. Mm. And this is true. Yeah, it's true. I have a lot of parents who during that during when the, when I went viral, mm. a lot of parents came to me and said that the ch- the child no mokaskula, one child or not one child, a couple of children, a couple of parents said that their child, um. Uh, the, got anxiety from just going to gamma school and they had to get therapy. Oh my God. To that extent, Hacham, how anxious are you about gamma school? Yeah. Just the mere thought of it mm. would make you so anxious. Yeah. To the point that you cannot say anything. You, mm. you have, and they have to be taken out of school. Yeah. They have to go for therapy. And then Yang Chalinya, if this is voiced out, this is why it's like so a lot of people choose to just sweep it under the rug because they know it's nothing that they know like for something to be done is very difficult because it's like how can you say publicly that my child has anxiety from going to Ugama school you're gonna get backlash because they're gonna they're, ju- they're never gonna blame the Ugama school they're gonna blame the child exactly. they're gonna blame the parents they're gonna blame everything else but the Ugama school at too young I'm like why is it so untouchable you know why are you why are you teaching people that no one no you shouldn't fear anyone or anything but Allah and nothing is perfect um, cl- as close to perfect as Nabi Muhammad but why are you acting like that why are you, why do you want people to fear you and why do you want people to see you as perfect that's a word fear right yeah fear that is the word I I, I do remember um, when I was in Gama school. I remember questioning like, why does it seem like my teacher is teaching me that everything I do is a sin? It's mostly don't do this, don't do that. Ani berusa atau berusa. So that's interesting that you brought that up. What I teach my kids is that is this permissible? Is this loved by Allah or is this hate by Allah? Mm. I don't do. I don't use atau berusa, ani berusa, atau mm. masuk. Masuk neraka, ani ahli syurga, cuma yeah, indah. Yeah. Because you don't put people in a box. Mm. You don't know who is going to neraka. You don't know who's going to syurga. Si puntah orang atau cuma ni. But and and there's a hadith that clearly says that you know you don't know who who goes to who goes to syurga who goes to neraka. But <laughs> when they're here, when they're here, they have boxed people into syurga neraka. When and then I'm like, who taught you that? What language is this? We don't mm. use such language. Mm-hmm. And they kept asking me, if you do this, apa hukumnya? Mm. If you do that, apa hukumnya? Mm. And I'm like, you know, knowing the hukum is important, mm. but knowing whether it is right or wrong is more important. Mm. Not to say that hukum is not important, it mm. is. But you got to know, if I do this, is this right or is this wrong? Mm. Is this loved by Allah or is it not loved by Allah? Mm. Will this action lead me to sinning mm. or will this action lead me to goodness? Mm. You gotta ask that. And so saying, Ani Brusa. And, and it stops there because he say, it's so overused. Mm. Like the word Brusa is so overused. Mm. But if you make someone think, this is what I'm trying to do with my platform. 
make people stop and think. Mm. Even if someone tells you this and this and this, stop and think. Is it right? If it's right, what backs it up? If it's wrong, what backs it up? Go and do your research. Go and find the facts. Mm. So when my kids came, they came back from Mugama, they started asking me, oh, ani orang neraka, ani orang syurga. And I'm like, oh hold God. on. Hold on. Who are they to decide also? We do not box people into syurga and neraka. We never do these things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, where'd you hear this? Oh, it's pretty common, you know, you hear it in school. And my heart just like sank because this is, this is not what we taught you. This is not what we as a household believe in labeling people that way. Mm-hmm. Ini pendusa. Oh, ini in turn, you're only making them more judgmental. Exactly. This is, uh, that's the word. Yeah. Making people more judgmental. And then you've been taught very awal, kalau orang itu nak buat aneh, masuk neraka. And you're like, no. Don't box them that way. Don't judge them that way. Every person has the right to be in Jannah. And every person has the right to ask for forgiveness. Yes. Every person has the right to ask Allah to forgive them. Mm. Naja. I mean, why are we? Why do we want a lot of people to go there? Mm. The Jannah is huge. Yeah. Let's 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 encourage people to go there. Mm. So, yeah, judgmental, fear, boxing people into labels. Mm. Those are the things that I didn't teach my kids. Yeah. But when they got back from Gama school, mm. this is what they took, what they took away from. Took away from. So being judgmental at all and boxing into labels is something that. We have to daily deal with nowadays, lah. Mm. Now my now my eldest son is like saying, "Apa hukumnya?" Oh, this is something that I do not like mm. because if you go straight to the hukum without thinking the consequences of the act, it diminishes the severity or the intensity of the act at the bar. Mm-hmm. It goes straight there. Mm. So, I mean. There's something. There's there's always room for changes, mm. and I hope that after Sultan visited Mora, um, there will be changes, inshallah. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it's not like trying to veer anyone into the wrong path, right? We're all no. aiming for the same goal, ba? Yeah. 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 We're all living in the same country. It's not like you're <laughs> trying to promote <laughs> anything else other than no. that. It's just yeah. I want people to. I want people. This is as parenting coach. I want. I want parents to know that they are the most important people in their children's life. Mm. What they say, what they do, makes a huge difference. Mm. So, so when the children come to school, with you know, and they're taught such a way, and you, if you are equipped with the knowledge, you are equipped with the ways of uh, and skills. You, there is a way to make sure that your child will not grow up as a lemming. I don't know if you know lemming sin. No, the happening. Um, I wouldn't say lemming. Like they won't, they won't grow up as mm. someone who ikut saja. Oh, uh, like sheep, kan? Uh, like sheep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So sheep mentality. Yes, sheep mentality. In that, they won't just ikut saja, but they will be critical. And critical thinking is important. Oh, it, I cannot stress it enough. Very important. Mm. When you're and and people much I'm like, but they're still too young for critical critical thinking. No, as soon as they're able to make a sentence. This is that's why you should teach them critical mm, thinking. Mm. So the critical thinking also applies when it comes to faith. I'm not saying that you should question it. I'm saying it. I'm saying that. All right, this is being said. What is the evidence? Back it up. It's in the Quran. It's in the Hadith. The scholar said this. You know, there are ways to actually back up um, whatever that has been inter- presented to you. So that's the same thing, Machamata. The the Boxing people into sugar and naraka, mm. critical thinking, which yeah. I'm like, is it right to box people into these labels? Do you think it is something that is approved by the Prophet? Mm. Do you believe that the Prophet would want this? If not, how would the Prophet address this? Mm. You no, know, Kantani Bupandukan to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mm. And we, we try as our very best to emulate him. Mm. So why not we try to emulate the Prophet in this ways of critical thinking as well? Mm. Just something that I feel we should consider. Consider. <laughs> yes. Yes. A lack of better words. Yes. Yeah. Trying to be diplomatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, if you could change 
how you said what you said or that post that garnered that went viral at all, would you change it? I would. And how? Yeah, how would you? I would. Change it? I would at all. I would phrase it differently. Okay. Mm. Mm. So did you did see a flaw in how you? I do. I do see. Okay. I do see a flaw because I said it in a way that it was suitable with my point of view, the, from my background, from from what I am exposed to and from the way I think. Mm. And then I just automatically assume people that the people... People would know where you're coming from. Yeah, people in my Instagram would know where I'm coming from because that's, because you guys follow me, so you know me, right? My point of view is like that. And it turned out that <laughs> not everyone who follows me likes me. Well, duh. Mm. So it turned to something different. And not intended how I as I had in my head. So if I were to go back and redo it, I would probably have said it differently. Okay. Yeah, I do admit that. Um, that was my flaw. That was my mistake in how I phrase it. Mm. Mm. It was taken differently. Okay. Um. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that and telling me that sharing with us that. Yes. Um, I think yeah, a lot of things that um, a lot of things. This is uh, anang. I think this is gonna be a bit controversial lah. This episode because I foresee a lot of people having a lot of thoughts about it. But I do ask for restraint when it comes to personal attacks. And if you feel differently, I hope it will be conveyed in a way where it's constructive instead instead of like macam harmful. Like because anang when it comes to talking about religion. It's a touchy subject, you know. Yes, people have is. their own thoughts. People have their own beliefs. Mm. Especially, um, I keep mentioning Mora. Jo. I hope people don't think I'm directly attacking Mora. No, not at all. I say that because you know that is our Ministry of Religion, uh, religious affairs, and I don't say like everyone in there is you know jihad. They are only. It sounds like I'm generalizing, but it's just like only certain people. Assalamualaikum. Hi everyone. I want to take this chance to remind you to hit the like button, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Talking to your friends and family about Easy Does It helps us reach new listeners who may enjoy the show as much as you do. And as you know, we recently launched our crowdfunding campaign to keep the show going, but this is entirely optional. Those who are willing and capable can transfer however much into the bank account in the description box below. And as usual, I want to thank you for your incredible support and hope you enjoy the show. It's very timely because recently I've had a reflection to me and my best friend Fatin. Speaking of which, she's also going to take Islamic finance soon to get certified because she's a financial planner. No? Yeah, so I'm very happy and excited for her when you said Good. another day of Islamic yeah. financing. Um, but um, I, so I, I shared briefly about my experience in Ugama school, right? I'm not saying it's all bad. Um, there are teachers there who I still remember this very day and I will forever be grateful for what, for what they've provided me with and the compassion and kindness that, that they sh uh, shared with me and especially the knowledge. I just remember like <laughs> the one memory that sticks out is this is how personally I'm not just a student yang bike. Okay? So I have to admit I'm a bit of a uh, bully and a rebel in, in Ugama school. I once ta told my Ugama teacher because he was um, telling us the Arabic words for penis and vagina mm. so he was like oh kalau in in, in, uh, no, in Arab apa, it, it's called zakar mm. I was like cigo boleh cigo draw ka zakar in channel soul yeah? <laughs> 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 and he was like eh go on here <laughs> yeah it was like really I was really stupid lah. but then it was like very innocent I also was like trying to understand apa kan? like what are you trying to say yep. you know like and I'm when I was dulu, I, I'm very outspoken jua as a kid so i i'm pretty sure i wasn't like a lot of the teachers favorite but um i didn't i didn't connect or resonate with uh being a muslim as a, in a way where i was inspired to practice i went through several phases in my youth or teenage years where skip smayang skip inda only when i in endured hardships like with my family did i finally turn to god after that lupa but I think recently, as I've matured, I've, alhamdulillah, found my way back to rediscovering myself as a Muslim and rediscovering Islam Joa. Only because, okay, so I, my, when I was in Ugama school, in the tabuka hati kuan tamayang, when I, um, when my uncles forced me to sembayang, hati kuan tamayang, when my mom 
sent me to Semayang Jumat, forcing me to Semayang, mati kunda tebukan Semayang, when people were preaching to me about Islam in a way where it's like hostile, my hati ni tebukan Semayang. My hati tebukan Semayang was when I met my friends, my group of friends who I'm friends with now. What they did was, whenever we hang out, and whenever uh, it's time to Semayang, they would Semayang. They would not even ask me to join. They would not also judge me. They would just go Semayang and then I would just wait for them. That's when my heart started to buka. Mm. So what I'm trying to say here is lead by example. Don't tell people what to do. Enough preaching. Dari dami sudah kami ini kena ceramah ini, mesti buat itu, mesti buat ini. Semua halal haram. Semua halal haram. Dosa. So what I saw was that this is the kind of compassion and kindness that I needed from what I saw. Like if you had that compassion and kindness when you were younger, do you think I think I would have? I I think I would have understood Islam differently. Hmm. Would you think you'd be consistent with your prayers in your teen years if you had that? Compassion and lead by example when you were in Ugama school. Yes, because there are people like that. Like the thing is also, my sisters are like that. Mm. Dorong, they're 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 practicing Muslims. Mm. They're not alim. Um, my mom is like that. I'm the black sheep of the family, so I'm completely. I mean, we're in the same household, but I turned out differently. So something must have been wrong with me, <laughs> kan? And then like I don't think so. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Like like we have two kids, and they're two completely different, and we have to celebrate the differences. Differences. Mm. So don't call yourself black yeah. sheep. In the black. No different. no. I mean like I mean I I celebrate the yeah. fact that I'm different, mm. but the thing is like I I also like much um feel like not everyone has the privilege to find people like how I found my friends and how That's they've true. welcomed me into That's their true. circle. And not everyone yeah. has that. Yeah, not everyone has that. Yeah. Which, but. Sebenarnya, if you only show kindness to people who are lost, there's a chance that dorong hati dorong tu kan terbuka wah. Macam there's one also example where um, we're in a group of friends kan to, and we're talking about sembahyang apa semua, and then I remember oh I said oh I I I started to try sembahyang subuh already, and then tapi I said oh I don't know kunun aku nampal. And then one other friend said, and he didn't mean this in the if he didn't mean it in a bad way. He was just saying, "Macam jokingly lah," because we already have that bond. I know for sure he's not coming from a bad place. He just said, "Ekolok on the panai kunut nujus sahto." So other one other friend intervened and he said, "Biarkan tu dulu semayang subuh. Biarkan tu dulu ya practice. Yeah. Belajar kunut atau can come after he's already like, if it's already embedded in my daily habit lah." So it's like step yeah, by step, exactly, and that's the kind of compassion yes, that yes. that also made me think. I'm like, okay, now it made me feel like I want to belajar doa kunut more. You know, it's, it's, I think it's the same job, macam like us women pakai tudong. Hmm. No, macam like oh, um, nampak ani nampak tu. Alang alang janta pakai tudong ba macam cuma tu. And women are at the end of that. Like a lot of a lot of girls are at the end of that. Ko cuma ni, ko cuma ni, ko cuma ni. Tapi ko pakai tudong. Alang alang tak kau nampak itu dong. And you know. And and I don't think a lot of people know what is what a struggle it is just to wear a tudong, just to refrain yourself from showing your beauty, just to refrain yourself from wanting to be like everyone else. It takes a huge it's to, it's a toll on you, but mm. and someone says the wrong thing, and that's it. It's off it's forever. Off. So if your friend didn't intervene and say, "Be kantia salat subuh," and you it was stuck inside your head macam yeah. like, oh sama oh, juga no. kunut nanda yeah. sah nda payah lah nda payah lah langan yeah. lah wait until I learn how I learn kunut mm. dan berita I solat yes but will which you will never, no, it exactly will never exactly <laughs> yeah. so if you were to just imb- your friend in the cakap cuma tu and abandon the whole thing mm. it's counterproductive kan yeah. so you, he, your friend did the right thing just say never mind let him let him solat I tell you I'm blessed I cannot shut up when it comes to my friends I'm so thankful Sounds for like them Sounds like you had really good friends I really am good alhamdulillah friends. surrounded by the best people who I cherish the most I feel bad because I haven't seen them in a while <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like a date people <laughs> Yeah but I mean they even like not just in terms of that but every aspect of my life they've been so welcoming they've been so supportive so I do sometimes I'm like I always pray for other people to experience that too because you need that sense of community that friendship to be able to 
pivot you to the right path should you stray ba? that's true yeah to accept you for who you are and never just judge you and just lead by example exactly oh, ba? and those who are really and those who really want the good for you those who really want you macam ke arah kebaikan they will never abandon you mm. no matter what you do yeah they will be they'll always be there nasihati you Even if you don't want to listen, it's just they're just like okay. You don't listen, never mind. I'm just gonna be here mm. when you need me. I'm here. I will be here. Yeah. So I think I think that's a what I think one of the greatest gift if, gifts in life is to have companions. I don't call, I I have people like that. I don't call them friends. I call them companions. Mm. For me, friends are just like friends. Best best best. Surface yeah. level. Not surface level. That like they you can have um friends young. Biasa biasa minum kopi that sort of thing, mm. talk about life. But then there are companions who guide you to be a better person. Mm. Just by sitting with them and be in the presence, you go like, oh, that's right. I yeah. should start doing this. That's mm. right. I should leave that. That's oh, right. Wow. And they don't tell you kochi money, kochi money, kochi money. That's one point in my life. And then someone told me that my tudongs were too colorful. I was too colorful. Mm. Like I was wearing too much colors. And the thing is that masa itu, um, I was, I was in between kambuka to in kambuka to dong and the pakai to dong. Mm. So much when someone tells me that I was wearing too many colors, I'm like, Is this when you were younger? Um, I think before the, before I got married. Okay. So it was like 2006, 2007. Mm. Like I was wearing too many colors, but I'm like, but these colors make me happy because before that I wasn't covering up at all. Mm. You know, my parents my parents sent me to Australia, so Australia was like. Rock on, <laughs> yes. My parents check up. Uh, my dad. I remember my my arwah father check up. Yeah, to my mom in front of me. Sini sini lah. Yeah, yeah. Naik kantel. Yeah, lawan sini satu. Yeah, baju ni 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 dah cukup kain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dah <laughs> <laughs> cukup kain. Anak tanya ni. Yeah, naik kantel lawan sini. Kurang kali. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, and and when I started to pakai tudong and cover up and everything, when someone said that to me. It breaks my heart. Like you know, I'm I'm trying, mm. and it's really hard for me to wear tudong and cover up. And colors bring me joy. Mm. Why would you want to take that away from me? Mm. Why would you want to take something that made me want to wake up and cover myself? Mm. So you know, and the, the, you you hear these things, and and no one backs you up, and no one tries to soothe you. You suck it at the end, and you. Yeah. Try to try to pujo sendiri pun macam like what's the point? What's the use? So having companions, they are on a different level where they will not judge you, they will not tell you what to do, but they will advise you, and they will stay with you until whenever. Mm. So yeah. And the, when they advise you, you because you have that bond because you trust them, you welcome it, wah. Exactly. Other than compared to when a stranger. Is telling you what to do, mm. be- and they don't know you at all. Mm. It's like, no, exactly. don't tell me what to exactly. do. It's the greatest gift to have a companions, to have someone to, and I and I and I wish that everyone could, like you, everyone could experience this mm. to have that that group of people that they could be comfortable with and be themselves. Mm. I still have them. Like Dari, I started to wear hijab, mm. which is 2006. Until now, and we're still like you know in good terms, and still the same group of people k- keeping in touch, mm. and sama sama menasihati wa. Mm. So you know when this thing happened, they they came to me and like you oh. know yeah, which I'm like, um, advised me, and told me to have patience, told me to uh, advise me in a in the nicest way and that sort of thing. So which I'm terima lah kan. But if someone in your DMs tell you to go unalive yourself, mm. well, how do you think that is? You know that it's not the the way to advise people. Yeah. It's not the way to tell people that they're wrong. Yeah, it's just un-Islamic, I would say. Yeah, that's why I'm always advocating for being kind to another human, because I experience it myself. How kindness is able to change me and change my perception mm-hmm. about everything. Yeah, not just in religion, but also in life. Now, I've received um. Questions from our listeners on what they want to know from you. Oh, yeah. So the first one: In what way do you both 
think that the government can unify both secular and religious education together. In my opinion, it goes. It all goes back to the question: Why can't an Islamic state claim that mathematics, language, biology, chemistry, physics, astrophysics, etc., came from Islam today? Okay, the ani panjang ni. Yeah. So let's try to remember lah, huh? And then why can't we bridge the gap between religious knowledge and secular knowledge? How can we use the Quran and Sunnah and apply it into theoretical physics? Why can't we have those who are experts in jurisprudence go into medical school? I don't even know what jurisprudence means. Do you know what it means? Mm. Okay. Due to all these whys, I suggested Awesome Mummy, who has a profound knowledge about Islam and she always convey about beauty of Islam, giving hope in people and it is that it and easy does it would be a good platform in my opinion to address and enlighten the whole education system that needs to be restructured from its teachers and their skills, its subjects, both theoretical and practical, its production of knowledge. Islam offers so much to facilitate our needs, but why are we not utilizing that? Yo. <laughs> Did we cover a, a bit of this? A bit. I lost track when I was reading that because this bit. is long. Yeah. A bit. Sudah. A bit. Okay. Tapi I think we, why? Okay. Why it can't happen? Like why is it not happening anytime soon? Okay. And how? Are we the right people for them to ask that, or should they ask the? <laughs> um. But I. But, uh, His Majesty did say that Yamo. Um, gabungkan. Okay. Yeah, the secular school and the Islamic school together, mm. and he wants it done as soon as possible. Yeah. It might happen anytime soon, oh, so we we might not know, but it will happen in phases. Yeah. Okay. But I think the question goes. Uh, if I read beyond it, is that why haven't we, in why haven't we used the Islamic knowledge introduced mm. into the secular secular subjects? Ah, uh, okay. Like you know, like how maths was founded by. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, Okay. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mention like physics and biology. They they have you know they have um Islamic scholars, not scholars, but um. Mus- Inventions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Mention like this was invented by a Muslim, and then who it was, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so you I think know how I found out about all of that. Rupanya, all the great inventors and mathematicians are Muslim. Yes. You know how I found out about that? Not through school. How? TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. That's interesting. I found out through my son punya buku that someone gave to him for his birthday. Mm. It was like great invention, one and one thousand and one great inventions by Muslims. Wow, one thousand and one. And I was Banyak like, tuh. my God, why is this not in? So I think that's what she meant. Okay. Like, why are they? Why? Because this is part of like our Islamic heritage, also, right? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. is it not introduced into mm. the system? Why is it not part of the syllabus? Okay, okay. I think also this is a very sensitive subject okay. because not everyone's a Muslim, ah. and it would be something that not that will not be welcomed by the non-Muslims. But non-Muslim. Inventors, can we learn about the pulang? The Wright brothers. So they're general. Einstein, they're not really. They're not. They're not. They. You don't say what religion they're from. Okay. Okay. So if okay. you say this is a Muslim inventor, and I think it goes back to the way that we are being brought up, or the way that the world has embedded in our heads that you know religion has to be secularized. Mm. Wait, can you explain what the word secularized means or Sec- secular? Secular means that religion can only be used at certain aspects or certain places, but not in all aspects. Oh. So when you say re- the the religion is secularized, it means that it can only be practiced at the masjid, at the home, ah, during nikah, okay. uh, during majlis tahlil, oh. only there. But then outside of these areas, it's back to... The, like, like, yeah, yeah, ah. among, like the, that's what I meant by secular and non-secular. Okay, yeah. Okay, I hope we answered that question. Right. Right. Okay. Yes, that's true. If you don't, yes. if you didn't hear what Fuad said, we are using the British. <laughs> oh no! But it's facts, you know. It is true that we are but using it's the. True. We are we are, we are whitewash and we're still. We still have a colonial hangover. Ah, okay. This is my husband likes to use this colonial hangover. <laughs> so he works with. Okay. So he 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 likes to use that. Ah. So in terms of education system, I think we don't have the main power, as in like the proper educators mm. to actually combine. Okay. Yeah. True. These two subjects become to have to have. I'm going to say example mathematics, right? Oh, oh, oh. 
we don't have someone who has a background in Islamic studies and a degree in mathematics to okay. combine and teach together. Do you get me? Because mm. you want to introduce Islamic heritage, Islamic, um, Islamic heritage, Islamic, uh, what you call? Um, knowledge, mm. I would say. Mm. Yeah. In secular studies, mm. we don't have many we don't have a lot or we don't have anyone really okay. that we can actually turn to. And this, they, they are eloquent in the Quran and the Sunnah. And then they're also equipped with algebra. Uh, I think that's what she, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think that's what she meant. Yeah, she or he. Yeah, she or he. Yeah, yeah. because okay. it's, we're not there yet. Because can and he said and, they, and she mentioned juris, can you read the line where she mentioned or he mentioned which one jurisprudence? How can we Muslims use the Quran and Sunnah and apply it into theoretical physics? Why can't we have those who are experts in jurisprudence go into medical school? Yeah, so jurisprudence are those who are equipped in the sciences of Islam, like mm -hmm. like, uh, like Islamic talk, like Islamic um, subjects. Okay. Why are they not qualified to go into medicine? Uh -huh. That sort of thing. So I think much I'm like. Uh, not not qualified to teach medicine. Is it going to field of medicine? Or going to medical school. Going to medical school. Yeah. Mm. I think in also in Brunei, those who have religious backgrounds, punya degrees, are not seen. Chana, how to say it nicely? Are not. I know it's not. Um. In in raw raw macam like the they don't see orang yang ada background agama ani as someone young. Boleh ada career path yang flourishing. Okay, apart from being either a teacher, teacher or a teacher. Yeah. So, it's like those who, those who decide to be in the Islamic path or Islamic studies path, they don't have a chance to grow, unless they take a different route or different degree or different career path. After that. After that. Uh. Mm. But not. But saying that they're not using Rampe degree at Tuba. Ah. Okay, so the second one. Awesome Mummy always has a creative way of thinking and linking current issues to modern times and our faith. She's eloquent and brave to share her thoughts publicly, whether on family matters, Brunei schools, weird hours, topics that are too taboo to discuss due to Brunei's nature of censoring and sweeping important stuff under the rug. She's been approached by, author by the authorities a few times, but this doesn't deter her from boldly voicing out her opinions, which are the truth. So just to let you know, as much as there's hate um, again, Atpa, towards you, there's also people who you know That's look nice. up to you. Thank you so much. So please ask Awesome Mummy one. Okay, these are <laughs> five questions. Okay, it's okay. Okay, we have all the time, and okay. this is the time for them to. I yes, want to hear yes. from you, right? Mm. Okay, so number one, we can do this part by part, lah. Huh? Okay, one. How does she deal with backlash or setback whenever she raises important issues despite opposition from the authorities? I think it has got to do with age as well. So this year I am forty. And I've been on the online scene since my te I mean, since my uni years. So I started with blogging. So I was the I don't know if you know the OG of blogging, like Kurapa, or Rano, oh, yeah, Morena. Rano, yes. So like so I was in the same time with Rano. Oh. Yeah, we were like the OG bloggers. Um Emma oh. Good Egg. Yes, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Dulu, when at the when when uh when we started not we started, but like a few years later, we we often had blogger gatherings so I think Rano mentioned this in his interview mm -mm. Yeah. so we, we would have blogger gatherings and, it, and then lama -lama the circle becomes small yeah. but I was one of the OGs of, okay. of blogging so it started from there like and back then like um, because it's technology is not as advanced now so people leave bad comments all the time hate comments all the time and it, it you cannot trace it and it's really anonymous so I've I'm used to this, to all the hate comments up and everything. Mm. And to say that it does not affect me, it does. At one point, it really made me felt so useless. Mm. Like, um, what's the point of doing this? What's the point of keeping, of being present, of being here? Why should I continue? Um, but I learned that over the years, and as I aged, the people that who matter the most are the people who actually take their time to understand you. 
and try to see from your point of view and would ask you the right questions like you did mm. like you know i'm trying you you kept saying i'm trying to understand i'm trying to understand so you kept saying that you're trying to understand it means that you're making a conscious effort to actually think of how this became that and over the years i do realize that not like this comment was like really sweet out of all the hate comments there are more people who back you up whether it's in real life or online mm. One thing I do appreciate is my husband mm. for being there for me who has never criticized me has never stopped me no matter what I do he said go ahead <laughs> I'm here and I will always have your back no matter what so all the after I got married and I went through all this backlash as well he says that nya habis-habis pun nya tadi pindah negeri saja aku tak cakap nya habis-habis Wow. So, I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm like, to him, it was that easy. <laughs> But that's the extent of support that he has given me. So, he's my strength mm. in in making me feel brave and courageous and to continue what I do, to, to speak out. I know that I don't have a huge following, like 4,000 saja. It's not huge. And I've had that IG since... I think before 2015 like 2010 oh. I think oh. like that or 11 so it's small number compared to how long I have it and I know that's not a huge following but I do know that amongst all of that other people who actually trying to trying to understand the world a bit different and trying to see that there are other ways of thinking mm. and there are other ways of viewing things mm. and there are other ways of connecting things so yeah how i face backlash is over time you just you just like okay this person has issues and don't take it personally ya andangnya cuma tu ya anda ada hajat dekat kesampaian maybe so just leave it eventually mm. you have to you you just move on yeah <laughs> okay number two. um Does she have plans to create a workshop on parenting or sustaining a marriage? Do you get oh, this a lot? Is that I, do, okay. I do. I yeah, do. Yeah, I like to handle. Um, because I have my NGL right, and yeah. I, I don't. Although I have it, I didn't put it up on my highlights. I was planning to. So in my NGLs, I do get a lot of questions about marriage mm-hmm. and parenting. Mm-hmm. Marriage a lot, like how to sustain your marriage, how to communicate that sort of thing, and I'm not ready to actually have a workshop on okay. marriage because I do feel that my marriage although is 15 years I do feel that it's not out of the woods yet mm-hmm. our children are still teens mm. so we haven't passed the phase where they have become successful adults okay. for me to say it's we still may. an ongoing one yeah it's an ongoing thing but even if we are our kids are already adults Chana is is something that for me is very sensitive to talk about mm. because um I do also do believe in the evil eye mm. and and I do believe that you know the the the, uh, the episode with Matul yes when she said that something happened to her so I do believe that is a result of evil eye mm. and I smudge and everything else as much as they're precious to me um can be rectified but my marriage my relationship with my husband is something very sacred mm. that I want to preserve okay. and keep it far away from the public eye because if I talk about if I have marriage workshops I would have to bring examples from my marriage mm. can my husband did this we did that this is how we solve things I'm still not ready to make that public okay yeah so yeah. and I'm I'm trying I hope everyone understand that I'm trying my very best to keep my marriage away from the evil eye mm. and i want to preserve our relationship mm. so maybe maybe when our kids are like 30 years old 40 years old oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and what with the regards to parenting i do have something coming up next year okay. inshallah so just keep an eye out inshallah we'll have something on parenting next year mm. yeah. okay happy 15 years by the way thank you yeah <laughs> Number three, 
Does she see any possibility in Ta'aruf being normalized in today's youth instead of the more common dating route, which is not permissible? I really like how people... Like, this Ta'aruf have been... I'm becoming more aware of Ta'aruf ever did since. We Ta'aruf. Ah. So, we met once with chaperone by all his sisters. Five of them. <laughs> wow. Five sisters. Um... We were chaperoned by five sisters, and I told him straight up, I said, I'm not into dating. He was out of a relationship, I was out of a relationship, and I was just like, you know, like, mm. screw this, you yeah. know. I hate men, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, his sister told me that he insisted to jumpa. Mm. And I said, okay, fine. But you guys have to come along with me. I'm not interested to just meet someone. Yeah. And I told him straight up, like, you know, if you want to be serious, meet my father, ask my hand in marriage, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Mm. And a week later, he told my sister-in-law now, he said that he's ready to meet my father. And I was like, you're kidding me. And he did meet my father mm. two weeks. Masa itu, masa itu, you offshore. So to, af, as, soon, as soon as he got off, offshore, to Karbaju, met my father. Mm. <laughs> and then... Um, my father said, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> like my dad said he was okay. My mom also said, okay. Which is very strange because I'm the only girl. Oh. And they're very protective. Okay. I had brought a guy over once to say that this is someone that who's interested. And they said, no. Immediately rejected. They must have seen something. They must have seen something. Yeah. 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 So we got engaged a month later. And we got married five months later. Oh. So it was like um, Like we didn't date We didn't go out yeah. We asked the right We asked the right questions okay. You know What are the expectations yeah. What does he want from this marriage mm. And most interesting bit was Maybe this could be Relatable to those Who are trying to conceive I was diagnosed with Polycystic ovarian syndrome So that is a syndrome Which is present in 5-10% to 10 of women And with this There are it's very difficult to conceive. Mm. So I told him up front, like, you know, if if you decide to get married me, we might not be able to have children. Mm. And he said, okay, I get married with you because I want to be with you, not oh. because I want to have children. If I have children, then it's risky. Yes. If not, then it's up to Allah. Mm. So we, he said that no matter what the situation is, it's, it's what he wants, it's me, not Anything else after that. Yeah. So, and a month after we got married, alhamdulillah, we were blessed with wow. a pregnancy, a positive pregnancy. And that is our first child. That is insane. Yeah, because before I got married, I didn't have my period for about two years, two, three years. Oh. So I, yeah, because of my polycystic ovarian yeah. syndrome, I didn't yeah. have my period for two years. So I wasn't ovulating, meaning that no eggs, meaning that I cannot get pregnant, that sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I told him this, and he's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's just get married. It's wow. fine. And alhamdulillah, a month later, we got married, and there you go. Mm. Baby. First one. Positive yeah. pregnancy. So I was really... So the Ta'aruf bit, actually, I'm <laughs> I'm also not like a mini agent of Ta'aruf. Okay. Um, I'm I think I saw this on Fasting Bros episode. Yeah. So yeah. I'm... I do match people up. Okay. However, I am, I have lack, I'm lacking in, can portfolio, apa tu? <laughs> Success rate? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm lacking in the, bio data. Um, I'm lacking in people who want to get married. Because, uh, oh, if young, you don't have a pool of, yeah, yeah. Look, because yang banyaknya okay. is bini-bini. Oh, like, like in the banyaknya. Like banyak in Okay, so for guys who are interested <laughs> in Ta'aruf and ready to commit, then please reach out to Awesome Mummy. Uh, this is serious. If you guys are yeah. ready to commit and you want to get married mm. uh, in the Ta'aruf way, and you did a podcast of the yeah. of Sarah and her husband are doing yes. Ta'aruf, go watch that podcast and then come back to me if yes. you're interested to do Ta'aruf. Yes. Especially the males. <laughs> Kami yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like we only have a, we have a lot of females, so we don't have a lot of males. Okay, so. there you go, guys. Come on, male listeners of Easy Does It, let's go. I mean, if you're ready, if you're in that space and mindset of wanting to commit and start a new chapter with a companion, with a wife, then yes, up and just go to your IG. 
Yeah, just Satoshi. Oh, just you, so you don't have a separate account? It's just you no, directly? No, because it's just me. Okay, and okay. I'm, I'm like doing it like small scale. Okay, it wasn't okay. like a big scale. Yeah. But I do intend to do something separately. But okay. for now, it's going to be my IG. Okay. All right. Does she see any possibility in Ta'aruf being normalized? Oh, so okay. Oh, no. Normalized. I do see that, yeah. Okay. Because um, we do see that a lot of a lot of single, peop- single people who are not married and trying to get married and having difficulty in marrying. Mm. So Ta'aruf is one of the ways to bridge that. Yeah. It's just that people don't know where to go. Yeah, yeah. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to turn to. Yes. So for me and my husband, we have people who were able to do that. Yeah. So for those people who don't have that yeah. and you want to do that. Yes. Please get in touch with me, okay. and we can make it happen. Okay. Inshallah. Yeah. Not all is a success because you know people are different, yep. have different expectations. It's but this is a opportunity mm. to try something different. Yeah. Yeah. What vision or influence does she want to achieve through her social media presence? I just want people to bridge their lives with their faith. Okay. And how to be how to practice a how to be be more present with their faith mm. and be god centric in whatever they do whatever decision they make whatever choices they they decide to take be god centric and you don't necessarily have to be super alim or super religious as how we see other people do it but you just have to have that belief that this is what allah wants me to do and this is how allah wants me to do it and this would please allah and that's just the just gap that bridge okay. and be that place where I could push you to that place. And my platform is a place where I will be able to help you go to that phase of your life where you are able to bridge your faith with your daily lives. Mm. Yeah. The fifth one, uh, Katanya, what are the top three traits or mindset she wishes for people to have more of? In the words of Brene Brown, be curious, not judgmental. Always be curious. If someone says something, be curious about it. If it if you don't agree with it, be curious about it. The second one is um, practice critical thinking. You know, it's very necessary to not just be a sheep. Mm. You have to think for yourself and not just follow the crowd. Even though everyone says, "Oh, it's good," blah, blah, blah. stop. Think for yourself. Is this really good, or is this an alternative? Mm. Third one would be. Be kind to yourself. I think that's something that I often forget mm. to be kind to myself. I tell people to be kind to themselves. <laughs> I forget to be kind to myself. So always be kind to yourself. You make mistakes, forgive yourself. Don't hold back. Don't hold on to that grudge. It's not going to. That's why, you know, when Wurong, Wurong Sami had, mis- had hate messages, I'm like, don't hold, hold on to that grudge. It's going to eat your life. Mm. So if someone hates you, it's on them, not on you. Be kind to yourself. Okay. So re- to recap, um, be curious, mm-hmm. crit- practice critical thinking, mm-hmm. and be kind to yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And then, oh, it says all the best and thanks. Okay. You're welcome. How is she? The, this is the last one. How is she? Uh, I think this one I don't much I'm sick it, but I'll just read it out, lah. Huh? How is she using social media responsibility to educate, raise awareness, and voice out her opinions, her challenges, and dedication to keep using her influence via social media? She had faced many challenges, both shared publicly and otherwise. How did she overcome low points in her life and continue to react positively? There are some moments where you just need to pull back, and I did that recently. I pulled back from social social media. I archive, archive, mm. archive, archive, archive. I archive everything, mm. um, all my posts, all my highlights, and everything. I archived, and I even took down my pictures, like my profile picture, and I just back away, because there are moments where you put yourself out too much, and people have too much of you. They start to take everything from you, and you're not getting anything back. Mm. And that was the moment where I felt drained. No, I I was sharing I was sharing my challenges and everything, and I felt very drained. So when it gets overwhelmed, when you feel overwhelmed by everything, pull back. Just go back, and have some time to reflect on why you use social media. What is the purpose of social media? Why you need to be out there? Why you need to voice your th- your 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 thoughts, your opinions? Mm. Why do you have to? 
say these things? Why do you have to do these things? So during my time, my downtime, I say downtime, mm-hmm. I did a lot of that. And so I came back with renewed purpose. Purpose, yeah. So I know what I want now for my social media. And I will I told myself that I will take a break every like once every month, once like one week for whole one week. Mm. Yeah. So every month for one whole week I will take a break. I will not be on my social media because I need that time to I need to be kind to myself. Yeah. You know, people want the thing with having a pri- public profile is People want a lot of things from you. So every morning I get messages, uh, ask questions and questions. And you'll be surprised at how many questions about hukum I get every morning. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be like, you know, this is like one, the latest one was about um, when to, when to, when to mandi hadas, like bila piritnya abis, like how do I know my period has finished? Oh. And this is like a, this is a common question I get all the time. So okay. yeah, so yeah, 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 and then and then, atu yang the morning pe- uh, that that's the period one. Another one would be like my husband cheats on me. What should I do? Can I check his phone? Mm. And then another one would be like you know I have this parenting issue. My child doesn't want to eat. Blah blah blah. So like I have all these messages coming in, and it gets overwhelming. Like mm. people just want things from you. Take 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 take. Yeah. But then I also have to have that downtime. Yes. So. When things get too overwhelming, retract, pull yourself. And this is actually the way of the Prophet. Because when the Prophet went to, before he got his, before he got his um, Kanabian, he went to Gua, um, he went to, I think he went to, uh, up to the mountain and he was on his own. You know, when the, before the angel Jibril came, he was on his own. Oh, yeah. And one of the, the, one of the things I learned in my classes about the Sirah is that, he saw so many things that um, that went against the Akidah, the Tawheed. You know, he saw people worshipping idols. He saw, um, uh, he saw, like, his community was like that, kan? Penyembah Berhala. Mm, so mm. he retracted himself and he pulled himself away from the community, from the society, mm. and just be alone for a while, just to, you know, recalibrate himself and be with Allah. Yeah. And that was when he got his wahyu. Yes, and we can see that throughout the throughout the history of the prophets, they were alone by themselves at yeah, one point, yeah. and then that was when they got wahyu. Oh my God, that yeah. makes so much sense now, right? Oh so it's actually God. the the way of the prophets, yeah. the way the prophets to actually retract yourself when you get overwhelmed. Retract yourself, go to self, go and seclude yourself. Mm. In my in out, in my case for a public profile. It's just just take everything down yeah. and just log off mm. for that for that period. And now when I came back, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just log off from my account for one week and then come back. Mm. And and you are entitled to take as long as you want. Mm-hmm. No one can force you to come back. Yeah. Although I did get messages like, you know, please come back, we miss you. I'm like, <laughs> no, stay away. <laughs> but if you think about it. The Muslims are forefront in terms of mental health, mm. and the Prophet was the first one who, who actually advocate mental health, which mm. was overwhelming things. Go and secu- go and be with God. You know, go and have that reflection time and be alone with God. So yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Just before we end, I would like to thank you again for your time and for your candor and being um finding courage to just share your story um again i want to keep reminding listeners if you've reached until this very end without typing anything thank you so much for that restraint but also please understand where we're coming from this is strictly a discussion and i do hope though that um because now there is an opportunity for improvement in terms of uh, education i do hope someone will take this opportunity to just have a discussion. Yes. Um, it's always good to share experiences, you know, from outside of um, what you're used to, mm. to get an outside perspective. Yes. And um, 
Yeah, thank you so much. Even myself through this interview, I learned a lot, and I'm having flashbacks of like Ugama. Oh no! School. No, it isn't the good way. When okay, you okay. kept referring to Prophet mm. uh, Muhammad punya, <laughs> macam what he went through up as well. Macam oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I forgot about all of that. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing. No worries. It's such an honor to be here, and thank you so much for inviting me. Oh my God. Thank you for all of you guys who suggested. Yeah, you should thank them actually. I uh, thank you, like, everyone. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, I'm just doing my. No, you know? <laughs> it's it's an honor to be here, and I I like we both enjoy your podcast, and Thank we so really much. hope that you you produce more and invite more people, and even those who are much I'm not so popular like me, I'm not popular, but people requested yeah. me. Like you said, every person has a right to ha- every person has a story to share, yeah. And we like to hear more from the people who do not have the limelight or do not have followers. Yeah. I'm sure they have a lot of interesting things to share. Inshallah. That's that's the plan. Inshallah. Like even if you see yourself as not like Macham, as popular as my other guests, but you do have a niche that you've managed to connect with. Because if not, people won't be sending you messages and asking you for yeah, advice. That's true. It's yeah. a bit scary to have that responsibility, but thank you so much. Now um now having been here, I see the important work you do to make people think differently and have and see other perspectives from different guests and i think that's very wonderful thank you so much thank you Izzy. thank you okay that's a wrap that's all we have thank you so much